Today's guest is a carny out of the New England area, and his family has been involved in the carnival business for over 100 years. I'm excited to learn all about the behind the scenes of the food, the games, the prizes, the um, the debauchery, everything that goes in uh, to the carny universe. Today's guest is Carney Mitch Candiano. Mitch, the Carney, baby. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. So thanks for coming on, dude. So we just want to learn about Carnies and Carnival employees, fairs, everything like it. Um, what is Carney an appropriate term? Yeah, I was born and raised a Carney. Really? My grandparents were Carnies. My parents were Carnies. My brother and his kids are Carnies. No still. way. Oh, yeah. So it's it runs deep, man. 1918 he started. And can I say before we really get going? Yeah. I gotta thank you for having a poor pedestrian like me on. Because you know, I don't wear a watch and I don't use a washcloth, so Tom would never have me on. <laughs> <Who's the girl? laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, Tom's. Oh like, yeah, it is he, oh, yeah, he doesn't like the pores. <laughs> he doesn't or like whatever. the pores. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, dude. I think we're great people. Yeah, look, I don't, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I don't have a washcloth. I, I probably should have one. That's what I use. He, yeah. He, has some, he hates washcloths. Oh, he hates them? He hates them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, well, I, I, yeah, I'll use a washcloth, like, to get, like, in here, though. Yeah, right? I mean, how do you get how it do you out? get in how there? How do you really screw? I try to use my fingernail and getting it out and then just, like, putting it like that into the drain or whatever, but... I don't think that's enough sometimes, no, especially as you get older. Yeah. You know, um, but good yeah. Old wet willy. Who yeah. Knows? You got to doing a wet willy on somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I remember doing, uh, I'm going to sneak one up on you later. Uh, are you really, <laughs> dude? Just wear a condom, bro. <laughs> oh, I will. Okay. That's all I'm asking for, you know? I mean, it's the least you could do, dude. The Irish hello. Oh, for sure, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's our first time hanging too, so I'll definitely keep it covered. Yeah. Um, but dude, thanks. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm just curious, like, so what is a carny? What is the term? So a carny, carnival, you know, carnival worker. Okay. I guess is where it came from. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what we are. And I know there's all different versions. I know people sometimes think of like uh, somebody that just got out of prison, covered in tattoos, smelling like cabbage, you know, mm -hmm. missing a couple fingers. And they think that's a carny that's working the ride or something like that. Oh yeah. That Irish deodorant. Yeah. Maybe. You know, and uh like we don't, we carnies don't call them carnies. We call them like 40 milers or green help or something like that. Cause like a 40 miler, he's just trying to get onto the road and get 40 miles down the street to the next lot. So you get out of whatever situation he was in when he joined the carnival. Okay. So there's different types. So you have actual carnies that are like, they've been in there for a while. Yeah. They're, like their families are out there. They have kids. They raise their kids out there. And then you got 40 milers. Yeah. We call them 40 milers. And those are guys that are just kind of like. Maybe just got out of doing some time and they're just trying to try to get a job and, you know, get out of town and get out of town. Yep. Just trying to get there for just something. Yeah. And so a lot of times the carnival will hire folks like that just because they need like a need lot help. of short. It's, it's tough to find help out there. Yeah. You know, people that want to travel and just be out there every day, and, you know, living at the carnival. Yeah. And you're in a different town every week and, you know, you don't get much time off. So it's, it's wild. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of similar to uh, comedians because you go to a town or a city for a few days and then you hit the road and you go to somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd say like that's like the calling like a, a open mic or like a comic is kind of like calling one of those ride guys a carny is kind of like the same thing. You know? Not, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes good sense, man. Um, and your family's been doing, you said hundreds of years. So, well, uh, since 1918, my grandfather st started selling cotton candy in 1918. Wow. Yeah. And was, what brought him into that? I'm like really not sure. He came over whatever. from Italy when he was born in 1900. And so he was about four or five years old, came over on the boat to Ellis Island and all mm -hmm. that. And, uh, I don't know, he was 18 years old and started selling cotton candy at like street fairs and little things like that. And, um, yeah, it's just kind of how we started and got into it. I actually still have some cotton candy machines that he built handmade, like wooden frame and like, you know, belt driven, like old, old school. They obviously don't work, but because then now they're like all sturdy metal, like, you know, 
industrial looking like oh the ones yeah we like use now. whirlpool makes them yeah like yeah something like that but um yeah we have yeah I your have cotton candy will have a fucking that. sock in it or whatever you're like this is <laughs> like one of these you're looking at yeah so we have a couple like that as are older those are kind of like the those kind of seem like residential ones that you can kind of like buy for your house so your grandfather came over and he started selling cotton so he started, started selling cotton candy yeah he's selling cotton candy and then like what he just gets a job and he stays like he just kept doing it and then you know he had kids and then my father got into it and my father and mother started their own whole carnival business okay. where they started buying rides and games and food and everything mm -hmm. and uh you know we had a whole carnival called candiano's amusements you know mm -hmm. way back before i was born and then when i was born they kind of split up and my dad started working for bigger carnivals, like the real big ones that did big, the big county fairs and state fairs and stuff oh, wow. like that. Yeah. So he started working for a company like that and then went for, ended up working for a, another, the biggest one in New England called Fiesta Shows. And so he worked for them up until he died. And so he was kind of like, you know, a uh, big shot out there. He ran like food and games and stuff for him out there and was a lot, man. So what, and so did you, what, was one of your first jobs in the carnival? Yeah. Yep. And so what's the difference between a carnival and a fair? Because we had the fair would come a lot, right? Yeah, so the fair is, is just- the same thing? Yeah, it's it, basically, except the fair is they have like the animals and everything like that. Like you have the whole agricultural part of it, you know, and sometimes they'll have like demolition derbies and, oh, yeah. and all that and like the races and um, all the agricultural, like the pigs oh, they and had the cows definitely, and yeah. all that stuff. So that's what kind of distinguishes it from a fair to a carnival. And they kind of been long running, like up uh, where we are, we have the Topsfield Fair. It's been around for like 150 years or something like that. Yeah, well, how does that 4-H element fit in? Because that's also a whole different yeah. element than the rides and the games. Yeah, like, that's kind of- You would always like, I remember we'd always have to walk over to like the livestock mm -hmm. shed or whatever. It was like a bomb shelter or whatever that had a bunch <laughs> yeah. of pigs in it and stuff. And You'd have to go over there and uh, they have the pig races. You ever see those? Yeah, and they'd have like the kids art. Like you'd won like yeah. third place, or whatever. And it was pretty bad. A lot of the kids <laughs> yeah, like cool. Jesus Christ. Like they hid it over here behind the goats. You yeah. know, it wasn't that great of art, but you'd be able to go over there and like um, they had like crocheting and a lot of local yep, crafts. Yep. But uh, did you guys ever have beef? Was there like a lot of like beef Not between, really between carnies the, and the livestock the beef was people? in the carnivals between the carnival wow like so during the spring when we're doing just carnivals we would split up into like three different sections so you could do three cities at the same time but then when we got to the fairs we would all get together and then the fights would break out wow. oh yeah like crazy fights so what was a lot of the beef between the people the, the workers Oh, I'm a first unit. No, you know, you're just a lonely f guy from the third unit. Like, you know, you shouldn't be over here, like with us or partying with us or hanging, you know, you, they kind of look down on you. Like, it's just like anything else. You know, the first unit got all the big rides and the nice stuff. And then yeah. the second unit was kind of stepped down. Oh, yeah. And then the third unit was like, they got all the shit, all the bad rides, all the bad stuff. So whenever they all teamed up, there was all these beefs going on, like, you know. Oh. Territorial stuff. Territorial stuff. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So, like, what was your first job in in it? I think my first. I think I was pro probably selling cotton candy. Probably yeah. in the in the floss. We called it a floss stand, and it was the one that did cotton candy, snow cones, popcorn, and candy apples. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, and the caramel apples with sprinkles. I love that, man. Oh, man. Was, caramel apples. I still make caramel apples. Do you? Oh, they're so good. They're so good, man. And people don't think about them that much. No. If you ask somebody, what are you thinking about? They never say caramel apples. Man, that's true. It just, you know, it's like something you don't hear as much as you wish you should because they're so good when you get them. They're so good. Yeah. They really are. And was that like, what goes into making cotton candy? Like, what is it? Sugar and, and coloring. Oh, okay. That's it. Sugar and coloring. Yeah, and it's but honestly the, not a lot of sugar. But what, how does it get the um cotton or whatever? It heats up. Uh-huh. So it heats the sugar up so it like gets real stringy and like fluffs out like that. It goes in the machine so that, that head there in the middle spins really fast and it heats up. Some people get crazy with the cotton candy. Have you seen the people that make the animals and stuff with the cotton candy? Uh-uh. Oh, no? You should check that out. Really? Oh, they get crazy. They make all kinds of animals and stuff with the cotton candy to give to the kids. 
I don't know how they do it. I got a girl that works for me, one of Mitch's bitches. Yeah? Yeah, and she wants to start figuring out how to do that. Really? Yeah. And that's who you call them, Mitch's bitches? I don't call them that. They, they call do? themselves that. Oh, yeah. So don't cancel me, guys. No, it could be a union, yeah. Who yeah. knows? A lot of these different. <laughs> yeah, the there's union. a lot of different unions I'll now. study. Yeah, My so friend the, is in the pipe fitters union, and he's always yelling about something. But um, Yeah, these girls, they call themselves Mitch's bitches. Huh. Yeah, they all made shirts that say Mitch's bitches on it. It's pretty wild. And those are your friends? Yeah, friends. Yeah. Employees. They, I pretty much hire friends or they become friends real fast once they start working for me. Yeah. Like Sil. Love you, babe. And so what about this? Bring that back up. Sorry, I'm just trying to learn about this. So cotton candy, it is made by heating and liquefying sugar and spinning it centrifugally through minute holes, minute holes. Minute. Causing it to rapidly cool and re-solidify into fine strands. It is often sold at fair circuses, carnivals. Wow. Yeah. So you just put some sugar in a hot, in the hot. Yeah, and that thing that spins in the middle, you uh -huh. pour sugar in there. And you color, you color the sugar ahead of time. Okay. And yeah. it just starts spinning. And next thing you know, it makes cotton candy. Yeah, it's, it's coming out crazy. And you got your stick and you're whipping how, it around. How fast? How long does it take? It doesn't take long to fill up a bag. Wow. But I don't know if this guy's going to get crazy. Maybe he does. I don't know. I've seen some. There are some people that really make some intricate stuff with the cotton candy. Yeah, there's a machine. That's just kind of like the one I have, just like that. So that was like my first gig, you know, like there's a picture of me. I'm, I was born in the summer. So like as, as soon as I was born, my mom had me right down out on the road with her. Uh -huh. So there's a picture of me sitting up by the cotton, in my little car seat, sitting up by the cotton candy machine while she's making yeah. cotton candy, you know, a month old. <laughs> Seriously. So your family was just out there like. Oh, yeah. And so like what towns was that usually? Oh, man, we did, like, the Topsfield Fair, the Marshfield Fair out on Cape Cod, the Bangor and Skowhegan Fair up in Maine, Rochester Fair in New Hampshire, uh, Hopkinton Fair in New Hampshire. Um, but it was a really big one in Connecticut we did. Wow. Yeah. And then in the spring, it was just all – the spring was always – sometimes you do some a lot of the same stuff, but a lot of times it would get switched up mm. because, like, if you didn't do that well the year before or whatever, you'd – you know, they would find you another place to go. Yeah. You know, and towards the end, I don't do carnivals anymore. I'm still in the business of like selling food and stuff like that, but I don't do carnivals because mm -hmm. towards the end of when I was doing it, <clears throat> they were still like, we were doing like these closed down strip centers, you know what I mean? Like old Ames and Kmart parking lots where everything's boarded up and we're in the parking lot trying to make nobody's coming. You got like, you know, nobody there. So this is uh, somebody making cotton candy right here? Yep. Is this the machine you're talking about? Mine's similar to that. I don't know if it's they have a different speed or a heat. It might be the same, because, but the, it does seem like a different consistency wow. than the one I use that, that I make. And so what is it? The sugar's in there and it's just spraying it out really hot? Yep. And wow. it cools off immediately. Oh, wow. So this is... That's all cotton candy. So this is a cotton candy machine right here? Yep. Okay, and so that's the sugar is inside of that. See that little thing? Yeah, that's spinning super fast right in the middle. It's right. spinning so fast. You can't even tell it's spinning. Yeah. And it's just blowing hot sugar out of it. Just blowing hot sugar, oh, baby. Yeah. And now this guy, wow. And this is a Korean guy. Oh, he's getting down, huh? Yeah, Here look we at go. him. He's going to make an umbrella. It looks like he's making, yeah, like maybe a UFO. Yeah, something. Wow. Yeah, these guys get creative. I don't know how they do it. So you guys would never do anything like this at the no, fairs, huh? No, no, I didn't even really leave it on sticks that often because I, I wasn't that good at spinning it because you want it to be like nice and big and fluffy on a stick when you yeah, give it to people. that's true. And so I wasn't even that great at that. I would always put it in a bag and sell the bag cotton candy. Wow, this is unbelievably oh, he's creative. Some stuff, yeah. Oh, here we go. Now, do you get jealous when you see somebody taking oh, it yeah. to another level? <laughs> of course. Yeah, I know, me too. It's like when you see somebody that's just that great. They're at the crushing gym. it on the yeah, stage. It's like you're meeting like, Tim damn. Dillon. You're yeah. like, ah, oh, damn. I'm just regular cotton candy. Oh, man. You and Tim were on the same level. Come on. Don't oh, that guy's so short. funny. He is. Oh, he's, he he's is. Just so funny to be around. Um, thank you for saying that. It's nice of you to say that. Um, okay, so you're working the cotton candy. That's how you get started out. What kind of, like, groups are at the at the carnival, at the... Uh, yeah, we definitely say separated. Okay, what kind of groups are at the carnival? Like, are there, because there's the games, mm -hmm. right? There are- The, the joinies. The, what is it? We call them joinies. Joinies? Yep. And what, what is that? The joints. The, stand, the trailers, we call them joints. Okay. And so they work the joints. Okay. So they joinies. work the games. Those are the joints. Yep. And then there's the food. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. And the concessions. Concessions. And then there's- And then you um, got the ride jocks. Ride jocks. Yep. And, and are those groups kind of like they keep to their own a little bit or what? Yeah, for the most part. The joinings and concessions will mingle. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mingled with everybody. Just I knew everybody. But, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times some of the ride guys would mingle with some of the ride- some of the concessions a little bit and, you know, they would mingle a little bit, for the, but for the most part, they were with their own crews, you know? Yeah. Did you ever work the rides? I, yeah. Yeah. I did it all. I, cause you know, I was just out there. And when I was a kid, before I even like worked officially, I would like, I knew everybody. So I would jump on the ride. Hey, let me run this ride for a little while. Or I would work inside the haunted houses, scaring people when mm-hmm. I was like, you know, 12, 13 years old. Right. You know, and like they had the walk-in, ha- you know, uh, haunted houses or the ones you ride through. And I would go in there and like scare the people coming through and stuff like that. And you know, that was always fun. And why is your family so tied in just for doing it for so long? Right. Honestly. And, um, you know, even before my father, you know, I had, I had, uh, um, my grandfather around the same time, I guess. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, he was, I got my, I had a great uncle or was he, a great, he was my father's great uncle, I believe, mm-hmm. or cousin. And he was already big in the in the circus business. He was one of the biggest freaks in the world. He was uh, most famous three legged man, Frank Lentini. Frank Lentini. Yep, there he is. Oh wow! Yeah, he had three legs, four feet, two dicks, sixteen toes. Oh wow! Oh, he yeah. had two wieners on him. Yep. Oh my gosh! Two peepees. Dude, I couldn't even. You could serve, dude, you could serve, yeah, it's almost like a, you're like a damn soda fountain at yeah, that point. Yeah, you know? Leg, dick, leg, dick, leg. Like oh, was, you could have urine and infant out yeah, of the other one, you know? It was <laughs> wild. Yeah. And they both worked. Really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And how did y'all know that? Was it? Did they write it down somewhere? Yeah, well, because he was so, everybody wanted to know, you know? Right. So, like, when he was traveling the freak shows, and he was really well-spoken. They called him, like, the mayor of the freaks because he would go and speak for everybody. Like, mm-hmm. when he'd be like, you know, we want more money or we want better working conditions or wow. whatever. He would be the guy that would go talk to everybody. He worked for Ring Lane, uh, Barnum & Bailey. He worked for all the all the big freak shows and circuses. Wow, Frank Lentini was born in Sicily in 1881. Yep. He was the fifth of 12 children. Yeah, and they didn't, oh. his, his parents didn't really like him that much, gave him to his aunt. Nuh-uh. Yeah, they they were kind of ashamed of him because he had three legs, yeah, each of is, different lengths. Now that yeah. I that is a that's a lot to, you know, because then you're like, um, throw it your hip, like that's got to be crazy. Yeah, it's got to be tough on your joints. A fourth foot that stuck out of one of his knees, sixteen fingers, and an extra set of genitals. Wow, running on that spare Jenny, dude. Yeah, huh? <laughs> Keep man. the lights on, bro. Uh, his condition was the result of a parasitic twin. Yeah. That was attached to his body at the base of his spine. Wow. And it was too, they couldn't take it off because, especially back then, I'm sure, that, but they definitely, it was too dangerous to try to remove. He would go on to work with every major circus, including Barnum and Bailey. In his act, he would kick a soccer ball, ride a bike, and skate. Yeah. He'd, He'd kick was, it out of his third leg, like hold the ball over a football and kick it with his oh, third leg. Yeah. Oh, bro, that's got to be so incredible, <laughs> right? huh? Yeah. Imagine, yeah, imagine play, running and you can just kick somebody with your third leg while you're running. Dude, imagine you could play footsie with bu- with two, two women under the table. You'd like, and still what? have an extra leg in different directions, yeah, and one le- and one extra foot to tap to the music yeah. you're listening to. Dude, what a time, brother! His career spanned more than forty years, and he came to be known as the king in the circus industry for his hard work and presence. He married and had four children. Wow, yeah, all his children came out fine. He died a lung failure. Damn, you'd think he got it. He got one of his legs caught in something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just the yeah. odds. Because every now and then I almost get one of my legs caught in something. Wow, look at that. Zoom in on one of these photos, please. I love the one on the right where he's got like the one in the and he's got each other foot on a stool. It's a, yeah. such a trip. Yeah, it almost looks like a... No, let's go to the other one that he was talking about. Yeah, is that what you mean? The black yeah. and the leather? Yeah. Wow, look at those pants. Those pants have to be like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. He said he would buy two sets of shoes mm-hmm. and he would give his uh, fourth shoe the extra shoe to a buddy that lost a leg oh so they all went to use oh that's beautiful man yeah you just don't see that kind of stuff anymore that's the toughest part about stuff um wow unbelievable look at that dude oh, there I'm, he is as an old man down there yeah. yeah can we get one more picture of him frank lentini oh how i wonder what would it be like imagine you this had to be such a flex so you cross your leg and then you cross the <laughs> other one over <laughs> Bro, you must have, people must have thought you were Jordan Peterson no matter what, right? 
That had to be so wild. Unbelievable. What they else? They used a picture of him on the uh, back of an Alice in Chains album. Was there? Yeah, they have a three-legged dog on the front, uh -huh. and he's the three-legged man on the back. I think I remember that. Yeah, it's actually their best album. Down in a hole. Is yeah, that them? Yeah. I'd like to fly. Yeah. But my wings have been so You know it. Dude, that's so incredible. So this is a relative of yours. Yeah, yeah. He was um, he was my dad's either great uncle or cousin. I can't remember. I, I tried to like really narrow it down, but it's you know so long ago, and um, my dad's not with us, so I can't ask him anymore. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Oh, that's all right. Um, 23 and me though, they might not yeah. even have these kind of. It yeah, might... my my brother actually started doing that. So going back like, to see with the what was twenty three and me and like yeah he's got the ancestry going on so he's trying to like put it all together yeah yeah so I tried to find out some more information about him through that I know he had four kids mm -hmm. um they were all came out normal mm -hmm. no parasitic twins there wow so yeah being a parasitic twin can you bring that up for me first of all I've always thought twins should have to fight to see who when who gets to make the shots call the who shots gets to stay alive yeah you know that's got to be tough and i'm not saying that nobody deserves to be alive but it's just like because it's kind of crazy when you meet one guy and then you meet and you know they're kind of just each half of a guy or whatever <laughs> yeah. and you're like what are we doing here like at least you two get together and decide what you want to say and then come tell us you know <laughs> exactly. it's like because it's a lot of extra kind of like back and forth you know a parasitic twin is a type of conjoined twin where one fetus stops developing but remains attached to its twin wow the other twin continues to develop but is usually born with the limbs organs or other tissue structures from its parasitic twin still attached it's a very rare condition Gosh, dude, imagine two to see. Oh, what is that? Sorry. Oh, no, that's <laughs> that, another that child. Blew huh? me off, huh? Oh, that child is, uh, she looks like Tila Tequila a little bit. Can uh, you I, zoom I can in see on that. Her? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, a Doja Cat? I don't know if that's Doja <laughs> Cat, dude. That's, <laughs> bro, that's fucking hilarious, dude. I don't even know what Doja Cat looks like. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, oh, I don't know, dude. No, that kid has longer hair than Doja Cat, I think. Yeah, imagine being a parasite. Like, imagine knowing that your brother or something was like a part of you, and now that they're, it's almost like you got to live. It's like nature, like, yeah. Put it, you must feel alive. There must be like a lot of responsibility, you know? He's, and then seeing your brother's wiener, if you look at your own wiener and seeing oh, your man. brother's wiener. Does that make you gay if you jerk off that wiener? No, dude. It just makes you a cool <laughs> brother, I think. <laughs> Touche. Dude, to not polish your brother off once a year or something on Christmas, you know. Yeah, that's kind of rude. Day after Christmas or whatever. It's not rude, I think. It's just. Well, if you don't ever let him come. Yeah. That is kind of rude. It's, uh, I bet when you get to heaven, he's going to be like, hey, come on, <laughs> guy. 36 <laughs> years and not one nut? <laughs> yeah, brother, I left that thing down there for a reason. Yeah. You know what I'm Could he took advantage of that. Yeah, I'm the one who helped you out and gave you the third leg. I gave you a fucking job, you yeah. know? That's wild, man. Um, so people like Frank Lentini, what was that group? That group was called, what is it? Freaks. Freaks. Yep. Okay. They were the and freak show. The freak shows. Mm -hmm. And that was popular. Did you ever work with that? Um, so occasionally the carnivals would have freak shows join up with us, mm -hmm. um, but they were all, you know, corner store freaks. They weren't really great. Like we had the, we had the, uh, the ripoff of the lobster man. And I actually think he was a relative of the original lobster man, uh -huh. but he had fake gloves that he would put on to make himself have fake lobster hands. Oh, really? Oh yeah. That's not real. Man. No, we had a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a lot of, yeah. Cause they had like the freaks were like the bearded lady. I remember you would yeah. hear about, um, what, like the four titted sister or whatever. You hear, they'd always have something, you know, the lispy Jew. Yeah, or they always the, have something rolling. The you lizard know, man like, or something yeah, like lizard that. Yeah, lizard man. A, uh, a real life mermaid was yeah. the one. They'd have a girl in a tank yes. with like a fake suit on, acting like she was a real mermaid. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The four shouldered Italian, they'd have that guy. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, the smallest horse. I met the world's smallest horse one oh, time. Oh, we used to have that too, yeah. Yeah, Tom yep. Thumb is the one that I met. I don't know the name of the one I had. We yeah. had. But yeah, he was at the fairs with the agriculture. He'd be there, he'd pay 50 cents and get to walk up and walk around and see him. And go in, yeah. yeah. They had the dollar. They had. I remember they had one dude at the fair in our town. It was like, 
if you gave him a dollar, he would tell you if you were fat or not, right? Yeah, like guess your age or your weight or like yeah. stuff like that. But this dude, I remember you give him a dollar and he'd just call you fucking fat. Oh, really? And then you just, Shit. yeah, he was like the fat dollar guy or whatever. <laughs> well, that's but a good yeah. gig. Yeah. 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 I was like, yeah, like, like what the fuck? And you just walk <laughs> off. You're like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> dude. I think he was just out there hustling people. <laughs> yeah, he might not even have worked with the with the carnival, yeah, dude. So that's a new one. And that guy could have been working different. Here's yeah. a couple of them right here. General Tom Thumb, uh, Charles Sherwood Stratton was actually a relative of P.T. Barnum. When Barnum learned of Stratton's dwarfism, he sensed opportunity. Oh, Barnum yeah. took Stratton <laughs> under his wing and taught him how to sing, dance, and impersonate famous historical figures. Wow. Oh, that was the lobster boy. Oh, here's Lobster Boy right here. As shocking mm -hmm. as his appearance is, Grady Styles' real life story is even more shocking. Styles' condition was known as ectrodactyl. Ectrodactyly? Yeah, I think you got it. Ectrodactyly, which causes hands and feet to fuse into claws. Oh, yes. Yeah. The condition ran in Styles' family. In fact, he was the sixth generation in his family to have it. His father was already performing in the circus when Grady was born, so he entered circus life early as the Lobster Boy. Wow, huh? Oh, that was his kid, yeah. Pinching ass and taking oh, names, huh? Yeah. That guy. <laughs> wow, look at him. And there's a picture right there of Bearded Lady and Lobster Boy. They fell in love. Oh, that's, that's romantic. A Valentine's Day love story, huh? Wow. I wonder what their kids would come out like, huh? Yeah. Bearded wow. lobsters. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, it would probably be something, yeah, you'd see it like one of those fancy omakase places or whatever, you know. I don't think Benny Hanna would be running that. <laughs> probably not. You know, get you a cut of freaking hair lobster, <laughs> you know. It might be. Who else did they have? Let me see a few more of them. These were all the freaks, right? Yeah. Lionel, the lion-faced man, born Stephen Bibrowski in 1891, Poland. Lionel, the lion-faced man, endured a medical condition known as hypertrichosis, which is commonly associated with werewolf syndrome for obvious reasons. In an odd twist of fate, his mother was convinced the condition was caused by her witnessing his father being mauled by a lion when she was pregnant. Still, that was a coincidence, albeit a crazy coincidence. Wow. I haven't heard of him. Unable to handle his appearance any longer, she put him up for adoption when he was four years old. Oh, no. Oh. He was adopted by a German entertainer who put him onto the circus Man. circuit. See, and he made a life for himself. We still, we need freak shows. That's true, huh? That way these freaks can make a living. Yeah, they don't have, and, and, and they had, I remember, what was that thing they had, a dime? I want to think, because they almost had one in the, a dime museum. Can you look that up? I thought you were talking about somebody that pays a dime. Dime museum and freak shows. From the popular Coney Island amusement park in New York City to traveling circuses and sideshows, exhibits that featured people with physical differences with some sort of the most prevalent attractions in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Wow. Dime museums often featured humans who were considered different for the public to view and experience. Yeah, because I think they had some places where you could pay a dime, I guess was the name, I'm assuming. From 1840 until 1940, freak shows were at their height. Historians typically marked 1840 as the beginning of the freak show era. The museum contained many exhibits of historic artifacts and gaffes. Oh, that was the year P.T. Barnum began the American Museum, a New York City attraction that cost a dime to enter. There it is. The museum also housed many people who were considered to be rarities worthy of exhibition. Wow. So you'd have, oh, the people included. Tom, yep, Tom, 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 there he is. A person with dwarfism, the Aztec twins albinos um and many other living curiosities wow dude that's almost like a deke fraternity somewhere you know <laughs> it really is i mean it's yeah it's different but it's probably similar so you so did you ever cross so you cross paths with some of these guys but it wasn't like yeah not like like i said though the the lobster man a boy that was with us mm -hmm. i had heard I didn't really talk that he was a relative of the actual lobster man, but he had fake claws that he would oh, put on. Yeah. And uh, we actually had one of the, the last living munchkin, though, that mm -hmm. was out there touring with us at the freak show as one of the dwarfs. And he was on, uh, he was one of the original munchkins and smoking bongs with him. He'd have to stand up on the, on a picnic table in order to like hit the bong. Would great. he? Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. He was like 70 years old hitting the bong with us. 70? Yeah. Wow, I think he was that old. I was, I was, I was young, but I'm pretty sure he was up there. And he was a little, little guy. Yeah, he was in a Munchkin from the original uh, movie. 
Wow. From, uh, Wizard of Oz. He was in Wizard of Oz? Yeah. You smoked dope with a Wizard of Oz munchkin? Munchkin, yeah. No way. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's incredible, man. It was pretty wild. God dang, that's lucky. Yeah, that's crazy, man, because just to be able to get to do something like that, yeah. Wow. I watched that movie a bunch. Jerry Marin, that was the guy. He, the, or This was one of them. The last surviving adult munchkin. Okay, when did he die? What's it say that? 2016. Okay, yeah, it was probably him. Because he said he was the last one. Bring up a picture of this dude. Wow. J and he could have been bullshitting right me, there. though, too. I was at the carnival, so he could have been bullshitting me, too. Yeah, he could have been full of shit. It could have just been a little dude trying to fucking get high. Yeah, well, he, he it was... It could have been a seven-year-old with a cane trying to fucking, fucking put, you know, a beard on a him. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody put a beard on him. Look at Jerry Marin right there on Wikipedia. He's huffing. He's got a cigar on him right there. Wow. Oh, yeah. That guy. That's beautiful. Um, so, so the freaks weren't as much of a part of you guys' universe. Not as much, yeah. no. You and, know. And now, what about the rides? Because yeah, I want to go through some of the different stuff. Yeah. Because by us, they would have the rides would come, right? Oh yeah. The fair would come. We were excited. We lived right down the street from the fairground, mm -hmm. so we walk over there. And um, the day before the fair, you could go and for fifty cents you could get on a ride. But they were just plugging them bitches in. Yeah, man, and you were the test subjects. Oh, dude, you would. Well, somebody's remember, going flying off. Oh, the zipper we go in that, dude. I, you ever, you remember the zipper? Zipper is my favorite ride. Oh, bro, <laughs> I, I'd get all my money. I'd have saved up my allowance. I would go down there because the day before, because if you went regular day, it was eight dollars to get oh, in. Yeah. We're like, fuck that, dude. You know, I got two dollars. I'm going in there. I got my quarters in my pockets. Yeah. But the zipper would shake all your money out oh, of yeah. your pockets. They did shake. that on purpose. Oh, dude, it was horrible. I get out, I had no more money. I had to vomit. It was shake. I remember it shook a couple of my teeth, like my baby teeth out or whatever. I was like, I believe it. Yeah, you get out, you had no enamel, you had no money. Yeah, because they could really get it going when they want. They know how to run it, so they could like really get you whipping around and drop it. It was whole, it 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 was unbelievable. Dude. It literally felt like you'd been put in the garbage disposal. Yep, that yes. was a tough ride. <laughs> I loved it. Did you? Yeah, it was my favorite one. Really? Yeah. What was cool though, when I was a kid in school, and you know, you would go on field trips to the fair. I don't know if you guys did that at your school, but we would take field trips to the Tops Field Fair when mm -hmm. we were in grade school. But I would skip that day of school, and I would just go to the carnival, with the fair with my father. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rides weren't open yet. They kind of were only there to supposed to be going to the 4-H stuff and all the agricultural stuff. And so I would go over and grab sneak over some of my grab my friends from the uh, from their chaperones and bring them over to the rides. And the ride guys would let us all ride the rides while they were rest of the school was at the 4-H section. Oh, that's nice. So it was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, because you were kind of dialed in, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I knew everybody. You know, they all looked out for me. I was like, oh, it's little Mitch. Like, I knew it because I was running around as a little kid. So everybody, you know, knew And it would copy a little bit of drugs or something sometimes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was wild. Was there drug use out there? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. And what were the drugs, really? What were some of it? I mean, weed, yeah. Oh, of course, weed, alcohol. I mean, especially, I mean, when we were at the fairs, you're open for so long. Like, you close at 11 at night. You got to open at 11 in the morning. So we're crushing beers as fast as we can once we close to get as drunk and as fucked up as fast as we can. To go to sleep. Or just if have fun. If we could. Yeah, just have fun. And were people doing drugs, too? Like, what kind of uppers are we talking? Cocaine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, plenty of cocaine going on. Fuck yeah. Dude, I'll tell you, just to step up though, they have yeah. straightened out these days. They drug test and all that shit oh, now. But. Why, bro, if you drug test a guy who's working the fair ride for me, get fucked. <laughs> you want a good ride or not? I, oh, I want a real <laughs> yeah, ride yeah. from a real drug using American. That's what I want. Yes. Okay. Dude, we used to go, we would get on the Gravitron, oh, right? The Gravitron was great. We would throw so many parties in that at night. Bro, it's this dude, one guy we get in there, right? And I remember like that you would get against the thing and it would like slowly move you up the wall yeah. and start spinning. And there was a guy in the middle who's like, yeah. Are you ready to rock? <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck is he talking to? Right. This guy was always just in his own world, oh, bro. Yeah. And the thing was spinning. And I swear one time this dude got his wiener, like was just showing his wiener to people who were <laughs> And he was playing a uh, nice day for a wide wedding. And you were so you couldn't even turn your so even though you felt like you were visually being molested or whatever, you, you couldn't, couldn't turn, turn your head to look and see if anybody else knew what was going on. So you get off and everybody was just afraid to say, I think we just seen that guy's wiener, you know. 
um, to November rain, you know? Oh, that's pretty sweet. <clears throat> and there was some parts of it were nice when they would play some of the ballads in there, but yeah, that was harrowing going in there. <laughs> yeah, that ride's pretty crazy. Sometimes the guy would get out. If you got a really wild guy, he would get out and he would come because you know yes, how they had the hang on the and pole. hang on the pole yeah, <laughs> yeah dude and walk and hang and pull himself around it and go back in while yeah. the ride was running you're like what is this guy doing yeah the dude would be walk i totally he would walk he could even walk around yeah the thing. yeah you have to hold on to the railing but yeah. he could walk around it yeah oh my god i forgot about that yeah he kind of was like the guy at the skating rink that kind of was like with the shat like the dude who would go through and do the backwards skating <laughs> yeah, show off. and like skate through your girlfriend's legs or whatever like who the fuck is this guy yeah it like kind of reminded like me of that guy you know oh here he is right here this is somebody on a gravitron there's somebody trying to sit up on it yeah he's trying to push it up on his own yeah or something we used to like flip ourselves upside down and be upside down in there on the against the wall yeah you could move all around. Oh, wow. Yeah, we didn't know. We were too small to do some of this. This is like late teens. Oh, that kid looks about our size. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's standing straight out. Oh, yeah, this dude vapes. Oh, yeah, he does. Um, yeah, it was fun. We used to throw a lot of after parties in the yeah, Gravitron. In the Gravitron. Yeah. Yeah, take me through some of that. Like, And is it men and women come too or no? Depend yeah, I mean, we had some girls out there working for sure. Yeah. Some of the guys were definitely better looking. Yeah, but uh, you know we had, yeah. we had we had we had some ratchets up. In there. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna work a ride and travel the carnival, and especially if it was 20, 30 years ago, yeah, yeah, it was. You got to be a tough chick. You sure do. And like there was some of them. I mean, this one girl's. You know, they had crazy. This girl had bust a nut on me, tattooed on her ankle. Oh yeah. You know, head hoe was another one tattooed on her. Oh, wow. Yeah, these girls, some of them had li the lot lizards tattooed on their feet. Really? Oh yeah. So it was women that were probably just doing their best out there that had been through a lot, probably. Yeah, I mean, you got good ones too. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. You Bust know. a nut on me is a lot. That was that was pretty rough. Well, it's I like, felt like it when. Was, yeah, I thought it was sexual harassment every time she walked past me. I was yeah. like, this is she wasn't good looking. <laughs> oh yeah. She was. Well. <laughs> She's not saying marry me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but but still, that's all. Yeah, that seems to be, yeah, bust. And then what do you even say now that she's married, has a family? What do you even adjust those letters? Like, like, um, yeah, what could you change that to? Oh, you could do us, you, me, I think. Bust, if you put the B and T, bust, A, take out the A, cover that up. Nut, take out the N and T, just the U. Yeah. Us, and then it would be a blank, and then it would <laughs> be you, you, just the you, and then nut on me. Take out the on and just me. Yep. Does that make any sense or not? <laughs> not really, but it's probably still better than bust a nut on me. Yeah, it would be. It would just say you. I would say us, us you, me. Yep. Yeah. You make it work. <laughs> I mean, look, I think it'll fucking. <laughs> It'll go That's over better if you're, at the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. if you're at the grocery market, it's going to go way better. Because if you're walking over by a cabbage, you get some hella fresh produce on your back, you know? Yeah, you're like, where's that from? Well, you told me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's the freshest produce they got for just semen, bro. Yeah, take me through like a good party night out there. Oh, well, the party nights like in the Gravitron, yeah, because they had the sound system in there already. Oh, yeah. You know, and you had the walls, so you can get in there and like, you know, really be able to party and get loud and not bother too many of the, the you know, the bosses. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the bosses still stayed out there in their trailers too, so you didn't always, you didn't want to wake them up in the middle of the night and have mm -hmm. them come out. You're like, why is everybody getting here? Bunk house, everybody. You know, we open in three hours. Wow. So, yeah. And what was the sleeping quarters like? So... I mean, be honest with you, my family didn't care where I slept at that point. Like, I was 13, 14, just sleeping wherever. Wow. Yeah, mostly in games. I'd sleep in the game at night, one of the games. No way, really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was That's pretty wild. wild. Yeah, it was. I mean, I've even slept, I mean, wherever sometimes, especially when you're going over the road, like everything's torn down, you got no place to go, you're waiting for your ride. Like, I've passed out in the generator box before just waiting. And what is that? Just the electrical thing? Yeah, the giant generators that run everything. Yeah. And because everything's packed up and that thing's always open, you got a nice cozy pile of wires you can crawl up on like a cat and pass out for a little bit. Yeah. And it's kind of romantic almost. Uh, yeah, it's it's wild. I mean, for the most part, when we got a little older, you know. Um, yeah, were there bunks? Or like, where did everybody sleep? So they had bunks. 
the ride guys had bunks. Okay. So, so the, the ride, ride guys operators they, had bunks. Yeah, they would put most of those guys up in bunks. And were they like a trailer? Like what type of bunks? Yeah, it was about? just a giant trailer. They would buy like, they almost looked like one of the, uh, like an 18-wheeler trailer. Uh -huh. And they would just turn it into uh, bunk rooms. They okay. would just chop it all up. Okay. Um, some of them, they had some that were built professionally as house trailers. They had those ones too. And they were, I mean, those were, it was pretty tough because it was like bunk, two bunk beds. And, you know, you're in there with... And it was times like a closet with just two beds. Yeah, and you know that's what they had. The ride got the uh, the games and the joinies were on their own. Unless you know, what do you mean on their own? Like people would sleep in sleeping bags, or people would stay at motels, or what? Yeah, wherever you could. Like if you made enough money to get a motel, you get a motel. If you didn't, you didn't. You'd sleep in a tent, or like there was a, at a point after I stopped stay, staying in the games when I was younger, I ended up bringing a couple of my friends out on the road with me. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as high school was done for the summer, we'd go out on the road until, you know, school started back up. And so I'd bring a couple of friends with me out there, Doogie, Jay, and uh, we, we'd set up like our own tent city away from everybody so we could party and not bother anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And we'd have a nice campfire. We even brought, in, we, we used to travel with uh, a lizard with us too. We always brought him with us. We had a nice little cage for him and he was our little buddy. And uh, we'd set him beautiful. up. Yeah. And we just drink. We had our, we had all our tents and nice fire going and we'd party out there. A couple men and a lizard, bro. It's like the yeah. Bible. Um, our, yeah. You know, like a new, whatever the new Bible they'll write will be. Yeah. The That's Carney crazy. Bible. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. It was wow. fun, man. And um, yeah. A lot of people slept in their games. So that would be it. You just crash in there and they would just pop it back open in the morning? Yep. Okay. Roll your, roll your sleeping bag up, put it under the counter. And what were some of the other rides, man? Do you I remember the Sky Master? The Sky Master? Yeah, or they call uh -uh. it the Apollo sometimes. It was too... Um, yeah, and like they would two go, like boats it boats, almost looked and, like. But they would go upside down, so you yes. were closed in. And they yes. swung like this. They were opposite. They would swing opposite of each other. And then they'd go upside down. And sometimes they would hold you up there. Yeah. And hold you while you're upside down. And you could shake it and like shake everybody's money out of their pockets. Oh, yeah. There it is. <laughs> Damn, dude, oh, yeah. Yeah. This was for the big kids. I don't think I went on this at the time. Yeah. This I used to run that sometimes. So oh. it was really easy to tear down and set up. And sometimes mm -hmm. I would run it. And you're in the doghouse. And, you know, it's just a kind of, just a remote control, like a little joystick. You get it going, you rock it back and forth until you get enough energy to get it up and around and you can hold it up there and you'd hold it and you just shake it a little bit and wiggle it. So it would go back and forth a little bit and you start shaking the money out of their pockets. So it all falls yeah. down. Although one time there was a bad, bad scene because you're always supposed to wait till the end of the ride to go pick up the money. Well, a kid who ran it all the time was trying to be a daredevil and he ran through to get the money while it was on, while the ride was still in, while it was up top. Mm hmm ended up getting hit uh -uh. oh yeah it was pretty wild How? he lived he lived he did live wow but, but it was a mess i wasn't there at that at that carnival or fair when it happened but i was at the next one and you lose a limb they put you just right over in a freak show yeah, you, now you go right to the freak show i think punts you right or you, or you can be in a game after dude. that too you know because you can work a game with one arm yeah or in a wheelchair wow so so a guy got damaged up pretty good yeah he got hit pretty good damn that was pretty crazy is that one of the worst accidents you've ever seen out there? That was probably the worst. Yeah, we were running that skydiver one time, and the you know how you got the shoulder bars that come down. Mm -hmm. It had let go while the girl was in there, but the ca you're caged in still too. But she was flopping around while it was going around, like the, while she was upside down, the shoulder bars came up and she fell into the cart and like just getting just banged around just getting banged around while I was spinning around and People, how and how long if somebody's not doing well on a ride can you shut it down for them does it take a few seconds enough? yeah it'll take sometimes uh, uh some take longer than others to slow down and come to a stop wow yeah i mean there was one the freak out i don't know if you've heard of the freak out it's the a, freak out yeah it's a pretty dope ride now now that's my favorite ride i'd really? say out of all of them let me see kind of like uh it's an arm and it's got these other arms that come down and those spin while it goes back and forth and you get an awesome sense of weightlessness almost like a like a roller coaster i'd say like mm. that first drop there it is freak out oh that's pretty cool looking yeah they didn't have the freak out oh so that so that goes like a pendulum and yep. spins and spins yep. oh yeah and um <sighs> Dude, I remember, yeah, we would get on that swing. So one of them was like a swing set. You just faced out. Yeah, the and, swinger. Yeah, and it would just, and you would just, people would just be 
you would just people would be vomiting like every, people would be like standing watching you and then literally you come around and just splash oh, and maybe yeah. just dose them up with that fucking with that tummy skeet baby yeah. that vomit you gotta wash up a lot of puke on some of those rides they get a lot of pukers we had one i don't even remember the name of the official name of the ride but we called it the puke barrel <laughs> yeah well that's what i'm saying dude that's you guys all... were making shit up yeah that was the name of it the puke barrel and i was like okay i don't even know the official name and if what what ride caused the most vomit you think the puke barrel really probably it was uh just, it looked like one of those metal 55 gallon drums you know those metal like garbage can b barrels but it was huge okay yeah you know and so it was massive and say it was on its side mm -hmm. and you go in it had a sliding door and you go in and then there were two seats that people could sit in circle seats and those spun like this while the floor rocked back and forth like this and the outside barrel spun like this with strobe lights going on of course, inside. I of mean, course. who's not going to puke? Yeah. It was pretty wild. Yeah, it was good stuff. So we actually owned one of those Candianos. My mom and dad owned a couple of them, actually. Would have been So they split up when I was like a year old. So they ended up, I was too young to kind of help with the business. So my mom sold most of the rides by the time I was, you know, a teenager. So we still had some stuff, kitty rides and stuff, but we had gotten rid of all, she had gotten rid of all the major rides that she had had. Yeah. Bring that video up. You're going to show us. And now what do you do when something, what is this? What is this here? Oh, that's looks like the, what we called them that? the thousand and one nights. I'm not sure what this version's called, but that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. It looks like the whole thing is shaking. So people are going and jumping on the side to like hold oh, it down. Like hold it. Yeah. Yeah. What oh, do you, yeah. a carnival ride in Traverse City, Michigan suddenly malfunction? What do you do when Oof. this kind of thing happens? What do y'all do? Shut it the F down. But Shut how do you, I mean, people are trying to save this thing from falling over. Yeah. They're all trying to get some weight on it. Is that a realistic approach, you think? Is that safe or would you tell the people? I mean, not? it could be. Oh, because that was one of the things about the carnival. You always felt like nobody had your back in a way. Yeah. Which was something exciting about it <laughs> and deathly alarming. Like, well, isn't that and you felt like if you died, they wouldn't tell your parents. Yeah, I could. I mean, we've probably buried some bodies out back. God. I mean, in the haunted house, probably some of those bodies in there, are probably kids that just never made it out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, so, but I'll be honest with you though, the carnival rides are uh, a, a lot safer than probably amusement parks. Amusement parks, really? Yeah, because they get inspected every week, so you're getting state inspectors every single week. Every time you set up, they have to come in and like, and uh, you know, give it a, a go ahead. So, what's the worst accident you've ever seen out there? So that was, I mean, I didn't see the kid get hit by the Sky Master, but that was probably the worst. Although at one fair that I was at, at Topsfield Fair. I forget the name of the ride, but somebody did come flying out of it, but they didn't die. Or I, can, I wish I could remember the ride. But, but they always say those people didn't die, but you never see those people anymore. Yeah, that's true. You know, or like, they'll be like, yeah, they, yeah, Janet didn't die. And they'll be like, well, then why isn't, yeah. yeah where is she? Yeah. Oh, she went to Florida. She retired. Yeah, people, yeah. She <laughs> retired. She's 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, where did she? So that's just the thing I think sometimes about that kind of stuff that seems like a little bit tricky, man. Where you're but like, like I was saying, they um, like I did, they uh, they do inspect them a lot more than like your your regular music parks, mm -hmm. amusement that are just set up year round. They only get like one or two inspections a year. Oh yeah. And so, but the carnival, like they have to get state inspected every week, every time you set up in a new place. So, okay, wow, I didn't, I, I did not expect that. Yeah. Because it seems like they're not even... You know where the shady part comes in mm -hmm. is where, like, say something breaks or something happens during the week, and then it gets fixed, not up to par. In between inspections. In between inspections. Oh. And you just got to have the ride. You got to have it going. You got to make the money. Yeah. And then so you have you have a, your main ride guys. So all the ride foremans have to do a once inspection mm -hmm. every day. And they have to fill out a form and say they inspected their ride. I mean, but... <laughs> yeah and then you have the ride super who's in charge of all those guys and is he yeah but it's like how lot how real how if they're locked in cool if they're not then it's whatever yeah yeah and i could so, be a ride yeah if i was a ride super dude 
You're like, yeah, okay. You just take it the forms. You're like, yep, everything's fine. Yeah. Or people, you know, yeah, people ain't gonna be. Everybody not gonna be living. <laughs> if I'm a ride super, <laughs> to be honest, and no offense to anybody. Okay, so you got the rides. I'm trying to think of the other rides there were. Uh, there was some. Um, there was like you know what we used to do too on the remember the super slide. Yeah, Super Slide was pretty fun with that burlap sack. Yeah, you know when it's really fun? Mm. During the rainstorm and you get a black trash bag. Really? Oh, yeah. You don't even touch that bottom hill. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, just launched off. Man. Oh, that's you gotta awesome. You got to open up the fence at the bottom of the <laughs> ride because I've seen people uh, hit that fence hit so hard. hard huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go right under it, hit it hard, and just get scalped on their way under. Oh, yeah. They got that fishnet face for the rest of their life. Oh, yeah. I've seen oh, some yeah. There's stuff, nothing man. like just, yeah, really After the hours, you know, getting drunk, going down. Sometimes we would just wet it on our own. We'd get a hose and soak the slide and grab a trash bag. Yeah, that sounds like fun, dude. Would you guys have some fun like that? Like, was there? Oh some yeah, I mean, there was one crazy party. We were we were um, we were all partying. It was like the beginning of the year. It was like the second or third carnival. So we were all like warmed up. Now we're like, all right, let's have this is one because you'd have parties where everybody would party together, like the ride guys, everybody, food joints, even some of the owners. You know what I mean? Some of the parties once in a while. Mm -hmm. And so this was like a beginning of the year. Like, let's get you know. Let's have a welcome home party everybody's in. And so we're partying all throughout the carnival. Like we're on the Sea Dragon and you can unlock the Sea Dragon and get it swinging manually. You just get a couple of kids on each side swinging it one way and you just really, and you can get it going. And so yeah, we were partying up on that. the, yeah, we were partying up on the Sea Dragon late one night mm -hmm. and uh, there was a new guy that I guess the ride super didn't like. He had just started. Oh yeah. And uh, he passed out drunk in his car and he was driving like this brand new white Escort or something like that, you know, nice and white. Pretty nice, yeah. But it was a small car, cheap car, but it was it was new. And uh, the ride super really didn't like him. And he was passed out drunk in his car right on the side of the, on the Sea Dragon. And we're up in the top seat, just sitting up there, having a couple of drinks, putting him back. And what they do? They set him on fire? All of us, well, not quite. All of a sudden, the ride super goes over to his house trailer and he opens up his, he gets a five gallon bucket yeah. and he opens up his shitter drain, uh -huh. his tank. And he fills up the five gallon bucket with all the shit water. And he goes over and he dumps it on the guy's car. Oh. And nothing, the guy doesn't wake up, nothing. So he keeps doing it over and over again until he dumped his his whole tank onto this dude's car. Mm. And he just slept through the night like that all day. And we're laughing hysterically about this. But it's outside of the car, right? It's outside of the car. It's on his car, but on right. the outside. So it's just covered now and yeah. just oh. everything. And uh, but that night I didn't see him. But the next spot, I remember I'm walking by and he's outside and it's he's trying to scrub it all off and oh. it's just got this brown tint and you could see where it like swirled all around like he could not get that thing clean for the life of him he didn't last another week he didn't no was there a lot of stuff like that there's a lot of like uh um hazing and stuff oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah and what about um take me into so i feel like that's kind of the rides i'm trying to think of any more of the rides that i the zipper was just harrowing i know i would get on it and i'll be like i'm not getting on it this year because last year i got hurt and i don't have any more money or whatever and i got electrocuted and hey, so, got electrocuted oh dude i got electrocuted because that was one of the big things is one time i got off of i think it probably was the zipper i got off and i touched i've told this story before i've touched the two like metal bars you're getting off of like the stair bars or whatever yeah, yeah. and it completed a circle and i just <laughs> Bro, got lit and I couldn't let go, right? And some guy working the ride behind me, um, a, it was a black gentleman. He called me, he's like, get moving. And I, I was like, I can't. Uh, yeah. And then he just fucking kicked me right in the back, dude. I think he even called me the N word, but I think he kicked me in the back. And thank God he did. Yeah. Because I was just like part of the, I was just completing the circuit. Yeah. I was just probably powering a fucking lantern probably or something the down the back street. On. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whatever I was doing, dude, it was unhealthy for me. Yeah. You know, because I was conducting electricity and um, thank God. But yeah, I just remember be, it was very, very, it seemed like um, there were some safety issues, I would say. Yeah, probably. yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, we, I've definitely run into a few live rides before. Yeah. yeah especially during Oh, has that happened? Yeah, it's happened to me. Okay. Yep. So that's a real thing. Yep. Because I know my whole life, I was like, I know this happened, man. Mm -hmm. Well, how does that happen? 
um, cause there's so much wiring going on in those things, like all the lights and everywhere. And back then too, you know, now with LEDs, they don't take as much, but back then you had those really hot lights and they took a lot more power. And so you got bigger currents running through and something yeah. could just get cut or pinch somewhere along the yeah. line. And next thing you know, you're making that live. Damn. God. Yeah. That thing really caught me up to speed, boy. I fucking aged probably <laughs> eight months. Yeah. I went home. My mother's like, God, you seem different, you know? <laughs> hey, Ma, you already grew a mustache from it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, things are going to change around here. <laughs> yeah. I'm wearing um, the pants now. But I remember that, dude. We walk over and, yeah, the rides would just be getting set up in the distance. And we'd come in and they'd, ha they'd have somebody standing over there. And for 50 cents, you could get over there and get you a couple tickets and go get on them. Yeah. And no, the other kids, people didn't know because the fair wasn't open. Yeah, but we knew this could be live right there, and so we'd all walk over there. That's cool. We I don't we never did anything like that. It was pretty cool, man. What about so, so take me into some of the games? Yeah, the games. Know? The games are fun. Let's get They're into definitely some of the games. interesting because you had the booths. You had the game booths. Yeah, we right? had game booths. We owned some. Uh, my brother still has. I I think he still has one or two. You know, they're definitely not as profitable as they used to be. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I used to have all kinds of games. I mean, a lot of them are illegal now. You know, maybe I should throw really? on, yeah, maybe I should throw on some like shades or something if I'm going to spill secrets, like the, the magician telling us secrets of the. About the games? Yeah. yeah if you want to put some on. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. They all know who I am now anyway. Oh, it's yeah. too late. Well, I, yeah, because I know there was videos that came out years ago about like exposing all the games or whatever. Oh, really? I didn't like that shit. I knew that you pretty much weren't going to win. No, there's some that you are not going to win unless they want you to win. Ah. Oh. If you if they got a, if you if they got enough money out of you and they got a good tip going, there's a big crowd. If you're in a wheelchair or something, probably mm, if you're maybe it all depends on how much money you spent. Yeah. And then like if they got a nice crowd and they want to keep that, and a lot of like if the crowd is really like they've been there a while and they really want to see that dude win and he spent enough money and you know you could get now you can if that dude wins everybody's gonna stop playing. Yeah. You know? So. Uh, so the part of it is some strategy. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's a lot of strategy to it. What was one of the games that was the toughest game to win, probably, you think? The toughest to win, like, legitimately? Well, so there was some that just can't be won. Okay. okay. So t okay, so take me, like, what is one of them? So, like, the cover the red spot. Did you guys ever have that one? Cover the, the red spot. So there would be, yeah. a, there'd be the a, red. A, a big red circle. Yeah, and you get, like, little discs this. or something? Yeah. Yeah. Could not be won legally. Oh. There would be one that could be won on mm -hmm. that the guy would show you how to do it on because uh -huh. that one can be won. Okay. And he would always use that one. And I've worked that game before, so mm -hmm. I know how it's done. And then you have all the other ones. The circles are just slightly too big to be completely covered. Oh, so the base circle? Yep. There it is. Ah, oh, cover the spot. Okay. So you see how that one's covered all down there with the five discs? It's completely covered. So sometimes those red circles uh, are just slightly too big where it's mathematically impossible to cover uh, it all. Dude, the saddest part, I just remembered this. So my brother, he was like the older brother, you know, and like he like was trying to win a game and I knew we didn't have much money, you know? So like he kept trying to win and like, I knew he, it started to be a little bit thing. Like I got to win this. My brother's yeah. watching me, you know, and he fucking didn't win. And I could feel it just break his fucking heart. Oh man. I have seen God, I so just many hearts that. broken. Really? Oh my God. I've seen families broken up. Oh, I mean, they've spent their whole mortgage, lost the car, like -uh. lost everything. Yeah. They really? even traded their kid in, like trying to win. <laughs> I swear to God. What Sometimes you you'll see the kids still up there as a prize. Now you can win them. <laughs> Yeah, you guys want this, you guys want this uh, stuffed bunny with a cleft palate, yeah. or you want Ricky? Like, nah, nah, we, we got a real life ginger over <laughs> yeah. here. We gotta feed Ricky, man. We'll take that fucking. We'll take that that uh, hoppy, the cleft palate, fucking Easter hero oh, yeah, over there. Man. It's if you got a gambler playing, uh -huh. you know somebody that gambles, they know what's up. No, you they lose everything because oh, they, they want to. They want to win. They want to win, and then you tell them. Hey man, if you win, not only will you get the prize, but I'll give you your, all your money back. Oh, every dollar you spent, I will give it back if you win. Want to play again? Fuck. 
Wow. And now a gambler is not going to say no. And how hard is it? Have you ever had to run somebody up like that? I kind of have. By the time those games are kind of, I mean, I ran the red spot and stuff, but I was a kid. I was still a teenager then, so I wasn't a real agent, you know. But were there some people they were good at? Oh, it? man. They were so good. Like when I was a real little kid and mm -hmm. I, before I was working, I would, you know, sit on the counters with some of these guys, you know, and yeah. they're not busy and I'd sit down and hang out. But then all of a sudden a mark would walk by and they'd get them and I would just see them run them up because like you pay your bills, right? Yeah. Theo? Like you pay your bills every month. Yeah. Yeah. So just don't worry about paying me up front. Just keep playing. I'll tell you how much you owe at the end. Nuh -uh. Oh, yeah. What, what do you think is the most you ever seen somebody lose on a carnival game? I've seen somebody lose a car. Like legit, had to give up their car. Nah. -uh. Yeah. Who who's who gonna enforce it though? Well, because they're a gamble. They're gam like most most gamblers pay their like if they have it, they'll pay their debt. So they'll go get they'll go get the title and sign it over right there to uh -uh. keep playing. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, you ever been to a casino? Like some of these guys, some of these gamblers yeah. are like. They lose oh, everything. I'm amazed at somebody. Yeah, I have friends that are uh, real successful, and I'm amazed at some of these guys that just go gamble all the time. Yeah. I don't. I'm so thankful I don't get any. Uh, like I like to play. You know, I'll play some games. Yeah, for you fun. Know? I like to do. Yeah, we play prize picks and stuff like that. And but I don't. I'm not the guy that's betting. Bet in the house. Yeah. Yeah. No. I'm so good, man. I'm thankful to God that I, I mean, don't have that. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen people like eventually, like they'll go home and they're like, "I just got hustled," and then they'll end up like going to the cops or something like that, and coming down the next day, and you got to squash the beef and make everybody happy. Like I've seen that happen. New Hampshire man loses life savings on carnival game. Let's man, look at it. I probably saw that Epsom, New Hampshire, from the salts, I guess. Um, Henry Gribbom. Says he lost his life savings, $2,600. Damn. Oh, it's on a life savings. Carnival game, and all he has to show for it is a stuffed banana with <laughs> dreadlocks. Wow. Oh, he got the dreaded one, though. Dude, BLM, bro. That's all I'm saying, <laughs> you know? dude. Yeah, at least you got the dreaded <laughs> banana, dude. Wow. Yeah, it's it was crazy. Those games are illegal now, though, up there. Well, it says you're expecting the kids to win a few things. Let the kids have a good time. Said Grip Home. I just didn't turn. It just didn't turn out that way. Grip Home says he attended a Manchester Carnival run by New Hampshire-based Fiesta shows. You Bam. mentioned them. That's us. It is. That's who we worked for. Wow. And wanted to win an Xbox Connect at a game called Tubs of Fun. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you about that one. Where contestants toss balls into a tub. Uh, ain't happening. It isn't. Mm -mm. What is it? So the bushel basket, that's what it is, the tubs of fun. So they take those, remember those old Apple bushel baskets? Oh, yes, I remember And this. they'd be up on the side. Yeah, like at an angle kind of. Yeah, at an angle, angle kind. And you got to toss the softball in there. Yes. Yes. There it is. Oh, there's some guys getting it right here. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a, there's a trick to it. Do you see yeah. how he's doing it? You got to give it a spin and it's mm -hmm. got to hit right on the edge. I see. So it'll like, it'll... Kind of like use its momentum to stay in there, and they're using plastic ones too. They, I don't know. Right, if go back to the bushel baskets. Can you find the bushel basket? They so might be just as hard. In the one we're talking about, it's the same game, but the bush those were made of the wooden ones, like the original Apple bushel baskets. Yeah. So take me through it. So what the problem yeah, the with those? They were at like an angle, right? Yeah, it's that same 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 thing as that with the plastic ones, except they were wooden. Um, <clears throat> They just won't stay in there. The softball is so light and bouncy, and mm -hmm. the back of those baskets are just so bouncy as well that they would just bounce out. You can't get the ball to stay in there. Damn. It's it's really – I mean, if you know a trick and you like they were doing, if you could get the right backspin on it and hit it right at the edge, mm -hmm. you can get it to stay in there. But how they get people so easily mm -hmm. is they'll – the guy sitting in the, in the booth – can easily toss the ball in there mm. from his angle. It'll easily go in there and stay in there. And then you give the other ball to the guy and be like, look at how easy it is. Throw, throw the ball in there and give him a free, here's a free shot. See how easy it is. And then they throw it in there. And because that other ball is already in the basket, it'll deaden that second ball and that uh. second ball will stay in. So now people are like, oh my God, that was so easy. But now when you give them the balls, they don't have that first ball in there and they won't get that ball to stay in there. Wow. And you're like, no, it's like this. This, You know what you're doing wrong, bud? You're, you're hitting it in the wrong place. Watch what I do. Watch what I do. And you take that ball and you're like, just like this. 
throw it in there and it oh. goes in and you're like, here's this ball, watch, try it now. And they do it and they're like, oh, I did it. You're right. And then you give them both balls again and then they can never do it again. <laughs> and you just keep it going, keep the cycle going. Dude, I remember the weird, there was always the weirdest energy when you were the kid and you were up there at the thing. And you'd, once you'd engaged in the conversation with the booth guy, if you're a kid, you're like, you start to feel like, man, I got to play now. I already started talking to this guy. You know, I, I know only got a couple of bucks here. What am I going to do? You know, and then you would play and then you would fucking miss the first one. And you'd be like, I am such a fucking loser. Yeah. I am a loser. And, and they know you're not going to win too. And they're just trying to get that two bucks out of you and get you out of the, get you out of the hair. God, that was hard. And I'll tell you what, if, if Eric Adams was there. He would have found out that there wasn't an Xbox in that box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. So you're saying that if they have the prizes, some of the prizes aren't even in the boxes? No. Wow. Oh, yeah. Because they know nobody can win it. So why you're not even going to put a real prize. They just put PlayStation boxes and Xboxes. I mean. Damn. Dude, in the crazy. You know, Eric Adams will probably find the yayo that's tied yeah. in there. But. <laughs> What's in here? And Mitch is talking about the episode with um who are we with Shane Gillis when we looked at Eric Adams. Oh, oh yeah, video. yeah. That's just that was so funny, dude. Yeah, that was a crazy video. I can't believe they're doing the drug searches like that. But yeah, oh, but sometimes we would win something and it would be a felt Elvis or a felt picture of a something. Oh, I remember those felt pictures. Remember, it was like, it was like neon and felt. Yeah, so some of it would be felt, like not all of it. Yeah, right? if you had a black light or something, it would look like yeah. you'd be able to see it oh, really good. Oh, and the good. posters, they had those felt posters. That's that, what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember those. We would win those. Oh, I forgot about those, yeah. The start art games, like the, the ones that you throw the dart at. Oh, that was fun with the balloons? Yeah, the balloons are a hustle, though, too. It is? Oh, yeah, because they don't always have like... Cause, oh, because you had to have a dot behind it or something? You had to have a... Um, They'd have different um, circles under there, and they'd say small, medium, large, like what size prize you win. And, you know, they would never have an extra large up under there. Oh. Or if they did, it would be under like a really like barely blown up balloon, so the dart oh, would always bounce. Do it. It God! Because <sighs> I based how I felt about myself for the rest of the year on how well I did on these games. <sighs> that, was the, that was the thing. Yeah. Even I the just... start art game, like if you didn't get that dart right in the it's... red... Star dart, you yeah, said? that's what we called it the star yeah. dart, where it was like you had to throw a dart, get it in the red, mm -hmm. and it couldn't touch the border around it, it would be a black border around the red star. Mm -hmm. And if it touched any part of the, the dart, was touching the black just a little bit, you didn't win. Oh, and the thing was, if you'd think it would be in there completely, you know, you're on the ground, you hit it, and you're like, Oh, did that go in? And the person working the game would go up and look, and if it was all the way in, but it was close, he would just touch it a little bit and push the dart so it would touch the black. No, -uh. oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't you just have to do it nice and smooth. So you just, you know, you just barely push the dart up a little bit. So it'll start touching the border and be like, oh, know. you're so close, bud. Come on up and take a look. You'll see it's touching the black. I don't even remember that one, Star Dart. I remember they had the water horse, but that was a competition against other people. So somebody yeah. always, always won. Yeah. I mean, there are ones that are slower than others. Yeah. Naturally, like the games, like you could hit them both at the same time. And one just rises a lot slower than the other one yeah. or blows up the other one. I remember, yeah, one, sometimes it didn't even make any sense. So I remember one time it was like ring the fucking fish and they had fish swimming and you just throw the fucking rings in there. <laughs> get a fish. Yeah, you didn't get shit. You're like, how do you even know if you got it? And the guy was like, you lost. You're like, oh, fuck, dude. I'm a loser, man. Yeah. 12 more months of winter. It's like Punxsutawney <laughs> Phil. Just seeing your fucking reality oh, man, each you. year when I went, it was like, God, seeing I forgot belt. how much, yeah, I based my, like, who I was off of that, <laughs> man. And just like, cause I'd, I would save my money each, you know, I was very particular about saving my money. So when we go down there, I'd have an, you know, I'd plan ahead and I would get my little, I would keep my money in like one of those gym beam, those purple gym beam bags, you yeah. know? You remember the, oh yeah, the with the drawstring? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I would keep my money the crown in royal there. Too. Yeah, the crown royal bag. Yeah. Sorry, the crown royal bag. And I bring it down there and God, dude, it just felt horrible. They oh, the ring, ring toss. toss. That was one. Now that was fun. I will say this because you know why? Because you got a bunch of rings. Yeah. And they can't lie to you. You're either getting it on the bottle or you're not. Like that's a legitimate game. That Those are still around. Right. That was a lot of fun. I remember. Um, those ones are a hustle. Oh yeah. The weighted. They're, yeah. They're weighted. Everybody knows that now. But And, and this is, we're looking at the weighted uh, milk bottles. Yep. And the softballs. Yep. What was so hard about it? Just they're weighted. They're not going to knock over with the um, softball. 
Because you'd, uh -huh. you'd fill them with lead or cement or whatever. And the top one would be empty. So if people said, oh, they're weighted, you would just grab the empty one and hand it to them and be like, oh, look at it, dude. They're not weighted. Right. Oh, wow. That's the, pretty crazy, The dude. bushel basket, that was another one that was a hustle. What was that? I mean, not the bushel, the banker ball. Wait, wait, you remember the banker ball? Uh, the it was like um, there was a wooden backdrop back, uh -huh. and there was like a laundry basket underneath, mm -hmm. and you had to like throw the ball against the back and, and it make would fall it hit into it. the basket. Yes, yep, yeah, yep. I remember that. So some of them were so confusing to me, I didn't play them. You would just push that basket in, so it would never do it. So right. it would never do it. So it would never drop in. Where did y'all keep the fish at night? Who was with all the fish? We had a fish lady. No way you had a fish lady? <laughs> no, I the girl that ran the rides, like, I never worked a fish game or, like, we didn't own one, but I knew the girls that ran it. And, yeah, they just had a trailer that was full of five-gallon drums full of fish, and, and they'd bag them up. Wow. Because that was the craziest part, because you'd fucking get home and you'd have a fish, you know? Yeah, you're like, look at this fish. Yeah, and your neighbor would be like, we're going to cook them bitches, oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> and you just have your neighbor go cook six, six of those goldfish or baby koi, yeah, they called them. Goldfish get pretty big if you let them. If you just let them go, yeah, I've seen some really big ones. My sister won a goldfish once, and they put it in their fish tank or whatever, and it grew into like a a big fish carp or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize how big they got. It, it it couldn't even turn around. The tank they got for it was so small, the yeah. fish couldn't even fucking turn wow. around. It was just like it would just always be straight ahead. <laughs> Look at this dude right oh. there. <laughs> Crazy! One of the world's biggest goldfish has been caught, weighing in at sixty-seven pounds four ounces. The enormous specimen was found in a fishery in France by British angler Andy Hackett, who reportedly spent over 25 minutes reeling the fish in. Can you imagine reeling that in and being like, what in the fuck? What did I just catch? I thought these were two inches long. <laughs> yeah. Bro, and if we're not, this right here could should tell you, if you don't think there's stuff in the water, <laughs> that is turning your kids trans or multi-armed or whatever, then I this mean, is a fucking fair goldfish. Yeah. This is a parking lot uh, minnow. Half of them probably spray painted gold. <laughs> yeah. That was supposed to die right when you got home. Yep. If that, you made it that far. Yeah, that's the ETD on these things. The second you cross your doorstep, they're supposed to die. It's how most kids learn about death is from a fair goldfish. But here we are, modern day, and this mother 67 pounds. And living in France, unbelievable. Probably working at a creperie or something. Chocolat. It's just unfuck, and that. people are like, "The water's safe. The water ain't fucking <laughs> safe, fuck bro." No. God, I'm sorry to get crazy, but this shit, dude. It's that like, is how crazy. much proof do you need? It's in your face that the water's bad. Yeah, I um, mean, that is uh, that thing could work in the freak show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah. pay fifty cents to go see that. Oh, you staple another little cock to that thing? I think <laughs> oh, fucking it'll do eleven years in a freak bowl. <laughs> Work over there and 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 Nipsey's Freak Bowl or whatever it's called. Step when you right were that dreaded banana, son. Um, alive, alive, alive. But some of the gay, yeah, I remember some of the people that worked. Uh, like some of the one lady, I remember for she we, we gave her fifty cents. And she we she was we were just scratching her back while she was smoking a joint or whatever. Oh, nice. And we're and then she's like, I'm all done. And we're like, well, What the fuck is that? Did you get the roach? We didn't get anything. We oh, didn't. Man. We might have got a little like contact high or secondhand what, yeah, high. Yeah, that's what you. That's what you were paying for. But yeah, I remember we gave that lady like a couple of us. It was like three of us scratching her back at the same time. We didn't even know her. <laughs> I was like, damn, dude, this bitch is wild. Oh, but man. it's kind of cool. Yeah, um, dude, that, that sounds like she would work. She'd she'd be good in the dunk tank, man. Those dunk tank clowns were something else, man. Yeah. What? So yeah, take me on some of the other periphery characters that were part of the carnival. Yeah, the dunk tank clown guy was. He was. I mean, you have to have a really special guy to be up there and really like 
be able to like go at people all day, get them pissed off enough to like spend their life savings trying to knock you into a pool like, of water. Like what kind of stuff is he saying? He's just saying like, I slept with your wife last night. Oh, yeah. Like, you know. Oh, your I, brother's an N-word or whatever. Yeah, you know, and yeah. he would have to get, sometimes he would have to have cops protect him when he closed, like uh -huh. to walk him to his, you know, get him off the lot because people wanted to kick his ass. I mean, I've seen people you know, beat them, like not beat them up, but go after them if they if he didn't have protection, you know, because not all the time, you know, at the fairs, you had cops around, but you wouldn't always have cops at the carnivals and stuff. And he would really get people going like they're not even trying to dunk them. They're trying to throw the ball through the fence like they're wow. smashing that fence with the ball. Really? Oh, yeah. So that guy had to have some real cojones or just be not even mentally that great or whatever. Yeah. Wow. It was wild. He would. uh, Yeah, they would. Mm. He would get into some serious shit. Yeah. A lot um, of beefs. You don't see yeah, them what anymore. They, what would they yell? So they were just like, yeah. Yeah, I, I was with your sister's mother last night. Oh, I was with your daughter last night. Yeah. You know what I mean? With like, your uh, daughter. And the guy's saying his daughter's 11 or yeah, whatever. Like, they what don't the care. Fuck? That's what I'm saying. These guys were getting oh. mad. The dude's just yelling. I'm, <laughs> like, I I'm slept like, with your 11-year-old daughter <laughs> last night. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, the dude just like, hey, I'm a pedophile. Just he thinks he's protected by fucking forty gallons. This dude's of water. just like walking by with his kid, doesn't even know. And all of a sudden, the guy's like, "What? What did you <laughs> say?" <laughs> God, it's just heartbroken, dude. Oh, it's a sick world, man. Yeah. Who else was there? They were like Barkers. I remember, like, oh, there was the guess your weight guy. Yeah, guess your weight. Was that a real yeah. thing? Did you that ever was see a him? real thing. Yeah, he would guess your weight or your birth date or um, what else would he guess? There was something else. How did they do it? It was just a, it was really, well, they got, just you, came down to numbers. Like, they couldn't really do it, but it was, you could tell, like, they just got good at it. You could tell, look at somebody, because there was that, you had, you had an average, you know what I mean? You could be off by, like, 10 pounds or whatever it was, you know, five pounds either way. Or when they oh, guessed your yeah. birth date, they could be, like, I, I don't know if it had to be, like, the same month. I know there was, like, a window where it wasn't the exact date, but yeah. I think it might have been if it was in that sign. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. If they're Sagittarius, is, I'll know, dude. Yeah, exactly. Or a Leo or something. You could tell. One of my ex-girlfriends was a Sagittarius, and I'll spot them bitches anywhere now. <laughs> you know? I'll spot them 200 yards away. You yep. got a Saggy on the fucking coming oh, over man, the ridge. Watch out. Yeah. Um. We had some characters, man. I remember the guy that worked the uh, the big old guy that worked the, the diner, the sausage stand when I was a kid. I mean, this is when smoking was still allowed. He'd have a big old cigar in his mouth, Italian dude. Mm -hmm. It's like, what, the, what What do you fucking kids want? Huh? Blah, 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 blah. Fucking ashes are falling into the pile of onions and peppers right there. Big old cigar just always hanging over his mouth while he's working yeah. the grill. Those were the best onions, too. You were like, you know, I love get them riled up until you get the ash in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You want that ash. Yeah, a little free burnt wind. You got to be careful there. on the first day of the carnival, though, maybe sometimes. If they brought, like, some, sometimes they'd bring the leftovers from the last carnival and really? try to sell it. Oh, yeah. It's like. That's a good point, right? Yeah. So because the carnival ends on a Sunday. Yep. And then it starts back on a Thursday? Um, sometimes a Wednesday. Sometimes we do overnighters where you would tear down Sunday night set up Sunday night and then open Monday. Uh -uh. Yeah. It's like tearing out. So they'd close you a little early, like five or six o'clock on a Sunday night. And then you got to tear down, drive to the next location, start setting up and then open up that night. So what other periphery people do y'all use? Do you guys hire other locals? You said there were like 40 milers, like guys that would come on. Yeah, and just you're all, I mean, they're always looking for help. I mean, it was kind of set up back then. You had like the main carnival owner that owned like, like say Fiesta shows. He owned all the rides mm -hmm. mostly. And um, sometimes some of the games and food, but you would have other families that owned like, you know, they had a whole grip of, you know, games or a whole bunch of food stands. And you would, and with the games, there was a lot of families that owned a bunch of different games and they would join up with the carnival and you would tour with that carnival for the year. Okay. So it was a lot of like smaller family businesses would join up under the larger umbrella of the yep. carnival. Yep. Ah, I see. So there was a lot of that. And so a lot of that's gone by the wayside now. Like they start buying up other carnival businesses. Then they start buying their own games and food and hiring people to run them for them instead of like, you know, having people come in. Renting everything. Yep. So it's some larger conglomerates now, you think? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know like Fiesta definitely bought a bunch out and that's how they got so big in New England. Mm. And um, yeah, I started like... We own some stuff. My family still does. My brother still owns stuff out out there mm -hmm. and does it. But then he also manages stuff for the owner of Fiesta Shows. Okay. 
So that gets him like good locations, you know what I mean? And like right. prime spots and yeah. stuff. Was there a lot of camaraderie amongst you guys? Was there a lot of partying? What was that like? Like what was some yeah. of the lifestyle like? Yeah, so we had some camaraderie, like definitely like the ride guys, like they would all have their own crews, especially like some of the bigger rides had like four, five, six guys as a crew. If they would like, there would be different crews that you'd have the music fest and like the sea dragon crew. Like, they called themselves the dickhead crew and you'd have these different crews. And so they had a really tight knit. And then like the ride guys on a whole mostly did the food guys too would. And then, you know, the different families obviously with, with the people that worked for that family were pretty tight knit. And then, you know, yeah, at night, you know, who, whoever, whoever you clicked with, you know what I mean? You, and I, I clicked with everybody. I would party with anybody from like the lowest ride guy to like the, the owners, out, you know. Were so. you a pretty hard partier or no? Yeah, man. Real hard. Yeah, really? pretty hard. Yeah. By the time I hit 21, I was already shitting and puking blood for drinking so much. No way. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, it was pretty wild. Well, did that run in your family, alcoholism or drinking that much? Um, Because that's kind of a lot of drinking. Yeah, it's all like really like I didn't grow. My dad, like my dad, my mom and dad got divorced when I was a year old, and so you know I had one foot in the carnival and another one in the city. I grew up in like a pretty inner city city, like you know, it was in New York. No, it was outside of Boston called Lawrence, yeah. Lawrence, Massachusetts. Yeah, Lawrence, Massachusetts. Wow. Huh. So it was like a lot of gang activity and stuff there. Oh yeah, that's fun. So and like the the carnival was like my escape in the summer. Yeah. Which isn't much of it. So it's like the carnival of the hood. Like, which one do you want? Yeah. And, uh, Damn. I, and, um, so yeah, I drank a lot, partied hard. And would the parties get pretty crazy with shit, shit get a little bit yeah, weird man. out there? Yeah. There yeah. Was, it, it would be pretty crazy, especially when you go to these bigger towns. Cause like you go to some of these towns, you know, and the girls are like, especially like a lot lizards, you know, the ones that like, they love the carnival the car when the carnival comes to town because they oh. ain't got nobody else, like especially up in the sticks of Maine or something like that. Really? So you're saying there was a lot of like uh like hookers almost that would come yeah. and service the carnival workers. Yeah. Not not hookers, just like straight up hoes, I guess. Oh, like, girls that didn't want money. Yeah. Girls that just wanted a party. Yep. Uh, oh wow. You get carfuls of them sometimes. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, wow. I at, never thought of that. At like a fair, you know, at one of some of the big fairs, man, they would show up after you're already closed down and everything and carfuls of chicks would show up looking to party. No. Yeah. Why did they know you guys had drugs or something? Yeah. They just were like, oh, the carnival's in town. Like, let's go meet the carnies, you know? You know, it's the, the only thing that happens every year in their town. Wow. That's freaking ripping, bro. But then the next night you got the car full of the dudes showing up looking to be like, yo, who fucked my old lady last night? No, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Then you got fights breaking out all the time. Oh. Yeah. How how wild would some of those parties get? Pretty, pretty wild. wild. Yeah. 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 Some of the fights were pretty crazy. I mean, it was no different than being in the city sometimes. Like it was. So the dude, dudes would roll up and they'd want to settle the score. Yeah. Right. And they couldn't. Because there's just so many carnies, like really, yeah. You know, you car show up with a car full of people, or even two cars. I mean, we have hundreds of people. Would you guys get in fights a lot? Were there a lot of fights out there? Yeah, there were. I didn't fight a lot. I wasn't much of a fighter. I didn't like to fight, but I've seen some crazy ones. Like, yeah, yeah I was. I got arrested for one of them. Uh, -uh take yeah, me through that. So we were at just a situation where we were in Connecticut and all oh, the carnivals yeah. got together, you know? And so you got the first unit, like, oh, the third unit's down there. Like, we got to go show them who's boss, you know what I mean? And they go down. And I am and I didn't even really know anybody from the third unit at that point. And I was friends with a lot of the kids from the first unit. And uh, I was on some, uh, I was on some, I think I was on some dancing condoms maybe that night. Some paper, some acid. Oh, some LSD. Yeah. Praise God, baby, yeah. And so there was a few of us on it. And so they came up and they were like, oh, we just got into a big fight down there, like down in Tent City and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I was like, and a couple of the kids are like, what? No way. Like, let's go down there again and blah, blah, blah. Let's go. And so I'm tripping and I'm like, all right, let's see where this goes. And I just went to go see the action. And so I'm down there and like, it just all hell breaks loose. Like people are getting ripped out of their tents. Like swords are coming flying out. Like yeah. it was wild. Like I'm seeing like little droplets of blood fly by my face, like laughing at me and stuff. And I'm standing in the middle, like what is going on? Like this is like, there was just some Quentin like Tarantino 30 shit. people. Yeah, it was crazy. It was pretty, and like security tried to stop it and they got beat up. And so now they're all standing up against the fence, like ripped shirts and like, holding on for dear life. They're like, we don't want no part of that. And the girls are screaming at him like, stop this, help, go stop the fight, go stop the fight. And they're like, well, the cops are on their way, don't worry about it. Like, we, are not, wow. we don't want nothing more to do with it. So Stady showed up, 
and uh, I I left, and the cops were out there looking around or whatever, and there was some people, and I I didn't really think much of it because I didn't I wasn't involved. I was there, but I wasn't involved. I wasn't fighting. Yeah, and so I was just like, ah, I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna go walk around and see what's up. Yeah. And as soon as I went out there, a cop's like, get on your knees. He comes running up to me with a can of really? mace. He's trying to get a BJ, huh? I guess. I don't know. He, he comes running at me. Like, oh, with get, mace. With mace. Oh, my Jesus Christ. I'm like, what is going like on? Hey, cops now, too. And so, and I'm tripping. So I'm like, oh, God. Oh, damn. Dude, I'm like, yeah, whatever you <laughs> want. Bro, one time I, and what happened? <laughs> they take you to jail? They maced you? Yeah. No, they didn't mace me, but they did oh. take me to jail. They did? Yeah. And, and you uh, showed up in jail. Were you still tripping? You oh, yeah, to yeah. I was tripping pretty hard. I remember I was like standing in the hallway and a few of my friends got arrested mm -hmm. and a bunch of the kids from the other side that got beat up got arrested. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm in the hallway and it was like, I remember there being like this textured wall mm -hmm. and I couldn't stare at it. I was just like, it was going crazy at me. Mm -hmm. And so I turn away and the cops just like, put your fucking face against the wall. Oh, he's uh, spitting on me. And like, get it. Yeah, like at a Guar concert or something. Yeah, I was like, wow, okay. Worse than Guar. Oh. And so I faced the wall and they brought me into the cell and whatever. We I bond out the next day. I had a hitchhike back to the carnival. No. Oh, yeah. As soon as I get back to the carnival. And they put me in a cell with one of the kids that got beat up. And so my friends are in another cell. I'm in the cell with it and I'm still tripping. And I'm just like yelling fresh fish. And like, I'm just kind of being out of my mind. And they Who are you yelling that at yourself? No, the cops. Oh, the cops, huh? I think. Well, maybe it was the kid that got beat up. Because, yeah, I think people yell that at you if you're the fresh one. Yeah, I know. But, but I, you were like, I'm going to beat him it. to the punch. I'm yeah. going to yell it. Yeah. Oh, I like that. And uh, <laughs> they decided to keep me in there for a while because they, like, they, everybody got bonded out. They let everybody leave. And I'm still in there. And then they went to lunch, the cops. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, they even, they were gone for an hour, hour and a half or so. And then they come back and I finally had calmed down. Wow. And they... And I was already bonded, like I, but they kept me in the cell for an extra couple hours. They finally let me out, hitchhiked back to the carnival. Because of the whole scene, it was on the news. I got fired that day and had to pack up my house trailer and hit the road. Damn. Yeah. That's wild, man. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. So, uh, But I got back home and my mom was doing an event that weekend, so I just jumped on with one of her events and just went right back to work. Were your parents, were they always in, in the, were they working at carnivals as well? Yeah. So my dad was at, was he at the one that, that happened? He might've been there. He might've been at another one. What was he doing at the carnivals? So my dad was, uh, he managed food and games. Okay. So right. he was just running around doing that? Yeah. He was an old man by then, by okay. the time I was around. He was 50 when he had me. Oh, okay. So by the time I was like working 15, 16, he was already almost pushing 70, you know? Yeah. And he looked like an old Italian mafia, like, dude, like, he'd cap like this with his yeah. cane, like, what are, you, what are you guys doing over here? Right, get to work, hitting his cane, hitting his cane at you, like, come on, dude, come on. Like Colonel Parker? <laughs> he, was, he was a good dude. Miss your dad. Um, yeah. What was the... uh? What's some of the wildest, like, was there some pretty good, like, sex activity going on out there? Because everybody always thinks, I think there's this vibe you think about, like, carnies, like, the ride shut down, and then the party starts, you yeah, know? Yeah, like the party you, starts. I think that's what the, the energy you feel like happens, you know? Yeah, like I said, you get those car full of girls show up. Like, oh, yeah. One of those girls that showed up, the head hoe tattoo I was telling you about, that was one of the girls that, she wasn't even an employee. She was one of the girls that showed up looking to party. It said, bust a nut on me? No, right? this one said, head hoe. Head hoe on it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just the advertising that they have, that's wild to me. Usually you don't know. Like a girl's tattoo will be like a secret, you know? Yeah. Like any, like, you know, like well, love might. is forever or whatever. And you're like, well, shit. I'm going to have to decipher this, you know? <laughs> but if somebody's just like bust a nut on me or whatever, it's like, well, it's just like not as much guesswork, I guess, but yeah. yeah. And it would be crazy. I mean, they, the girls like to party just as much as the guys. So, you yeah. know, there would be a lot of crazy stuff going down, you know, um, looking to party, looking to get down. And yeah, I've seen some stuff. I mean, there's, you know, a friend. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some stuff. A friend of mine, like this chick really wanted to get down with a couple of friends of mine. So he breaks into somebody's house trailer that we had never, I don't know whose trailer it was. He climbs through the window. Goldie locking, huh? The next thing I know, he's kicking the door open. And the door comes flying open. We're all standing outside and we're like, well, how the hell 
what's going on? He's like, we got a spot now. Let's go. And he brings her in there and right on somebody's bed. I don't know whose bed because they had the couch pulled out. So the door's wide open. He's going to town right there. With wow. Her. Yeah. Just making love, huh? Well, I don't know when you call it love, but <laughs> there was something going on. Yeah. Making almost love. Make God. Yeah. Um, so it was, um, it was interesting I'll tell you about another crazy game that we had it was, uh, it was called the crazy bike. Have you ever heard of that one? Crazy bike. Yeah. It was a bicycle where if you turn left, the wheel went right. And if you turn the handlebars right, the wheel went left. Oh my gosh. No. Yeah. And so I owned one of those and, uh, I couldn't ride it. I couldn't, but for good, my, one of my best friends learned how to ride it. So we put it out there and if you could ride it 10 feet, we would give you 50 bucks. Yeah, that thing was a hustle. It was it was pretty tough to run. I mean, but if you could learn how to ride it, and the kid that worked for me was really good, he'd be able, he'd be able to sit on the handlebars backwards and ride it. Like he got really good at it. Is it a unicycle? No, it was a bike, it's a regular bicycle, two wheel bike, a crazy bike. And we called it a crazy bike. And so the if you turn it to the left, the wheel went to the right. Yep. Wow. If you turn to the right, the wheel went left. So hard to try to figure out how to ride that. Really, especially if you never had. Oh yeah, my see? god, I couldn't even imagine this, man. Right? It's like because your like instincts, dyslexia, yeah, yeah. It's like dyslexia made a piece of transportation. But he could, yeah. He, my friend, could ride it all around the carnival like wow. that. Wow. Oh, that's a vibe, yeah. And so we would do it if you drove it ten feet. We would mark it on the ground. If you drove it ten feet, we'd give you fifty bucks. And now, was there a lot of ladies to me? Did you guys call <laughs> regular people civilians? What did y'all call them? Marks. Marks. Yeah. God. And we so have, everybody that walked through, it was like, we, how much can we got to, we got to get it out of them. Yeah. We got to get it, get that mark. And if you got one, you'd call it out. Like, you know, we got, you got a fresh one. You got a mark here. And a lot of people would wear these pins called, I love Robin marks, mm -hmm. but it would be spelt out like Robin, R O B I N and then marks underneath it. So it looked like somebody's name. Who was Robin marks? I was, I was Robin marks. I got it. But nobody was really actually Robin marks. Huh? No. Bring up a picture of a Robin marks. Let's just find someone. There's got to be somebody. There we go. Robin Marks. Oh, wow. There is one. And so, yeah. Robin if you get Marks. A, there she is right there. Oh, sweetie. I, I could fall in love with her. With her husband, yeah. And like for the games, you would either he, you'd either, either be an agent or a clerk. That's what we call the people that work the games, like okay. the joinies. But an agent is somebody that can rob a mark. And a clerk is somebody that's just going to collect his money and not really hustle them. So like, what, give me an example of how those would be at the game. Like a clerk is somebody that doesn't really, doesn't really know how to hustle somebody. Okay. You know what I mean? He would just be there like, oh, you want to play? He'll collect your money and you can play the game, but he's not going to sit there and try to hustle you out of more money. Okay. Where an agent is going to try to take you for everything you got. And who were the ages? Were there, was it like usually older people? Was it younger? Could it be anybody? It was, was it, anybody. Anybody that was good at hustling, really. Like there was all, all was ages. Was it whites? Was it Native America? Like who type, was it any? Well, it was whites. Whites. Yeah. It's kind of a white sport carnivaling. Yeah. Yeah. Has it, has it changed? Like, or I remember it being like that. It was like kind of maybe white and black guys that worked or white and black people that worked there, I guess. But yeah, that's it was kind a of all blacks. we had in our area. Too. Yeah. Up, up there and up North, we didn't really have, there's not a lot of blacks up North. Yeah. I mean, one of my best friends, artist, he was an older guy and he worked out there my whole life. He was best friends with my brother because all my siblings were much older than me. Mm. And so, yeah, we had some out there and some, you know, some, uh, I guess it's some Puerto Ricans and stuff like, but not really. I mean, now they have a lot of um, Mexicans and South Africans. Oh, really? Yeah, that's pretty much who's running the rides now. Why? What's changed? Like, how have things changed? Yeah, since the past to now. Well, it was hard finding. I think really good ride help. So they, I don't know why it was Mexico and South South Africa. I don't know why those two countries were picked. But apparently it's sold to them that you're going to go on a work and vacation. You get to see the United States and work and make money while you're at it, mm. which is all bullshit. You're just, you're in the carnival and you're at that carnival. It doesn't look any different wherever you go. You just, it's the same lot. So you're not, you're not seeing anything different. Would you ever get some free time? I did. Yeah. Cause you were a kid. I was a kid and like. Your parents were. They didn't make money. They weren't made of any. I mean, we were poor. Yeah. Wow. So it's not a big money maker. No. And my parents were divorced. So like. So they were splitting the money. No, I don't know. Or like when you have two homesteads going, it's, it's like. Yeah. But I didn't see my dad much growing up. Like yeah. really like, yeah. Until I started joining the carnival. 
Mm. I mean, I would once in a while, like I would see him on like holidays and stuff. And once in a while I would go stay at his house, I guess. I remember. But yeah, what it was, I didn't see him that much until I really- You almost had to carnival. be at the carnival to see him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, it's kind of a bummer. It might, it's kind of interesting. I it think. is. Yeah. It's I mean, a bummer. my dad was a hard ass too. So I guess I'm glad that I didn't see as much from what my brother said. Oh yeah. He was great when I was, I mean, he was an old man. So he was yeah. just like a- whatever people yeah start to lose their steam yeah their edge but so it was definitely different and my mom you know trying to hold the carnival together herself when all the kids were already grown and out of the house and not helping anymore and lot. i was still like a really young kid so yeah we didn't and we lived we didn't have much money like i was getting school lunches and shit like that oh yeah same man yeah school lunches is always so weird because you had to go get the ticket each day in the morning did you have to do that no, I forgot how they did it. I think it was just like when you signed up and I don't remember. We had to go get the free ticket each day. So it'd be like kind of embarrassing. I felt like it was embarrassing. I remember that because I think it was by name or something like that or a separate line or yeah, a separate line. I remember you'd have to go to get the free ticket from the lady and had a Y on it. Yeah. And if you paid ticket, it had an X on it. Yeah. And I remember, yeah, we had to get the free ticket. I forgot about that, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not saying like I'm ashamed of anything, but I remember feeling at the time like at the time, yeah, you, feel yeah, you were trying to just like pretend you weren't getting that one. You're yeah. like, I don't know why they had me on this list. <laughs> That's strange. Yeah, you're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really, it <laughs> yeah, happens yeah. every day. Yeah. <laughs> sure. God, they must have make some poor. It, whoever's making these lists <laughs> is just confused, huh? <laughs> Um, a lot of times people look at the carnival as a sad that like I think it got that rap over the years in a way that it just like was a negative. What are some positives about it? Because I also loved like I loved go. There was something like you almost felt like you were in the big city in a way because there was these lights going on and there was you know people would come that you didn't normally get to see because there were kids that went to different schools and that if they didn't go to your school then maybe you'd see them there um those are things that i liked about it there were like gang you know like yeah you got to gamble or play games you didn't get to do that there was no other world that you got to do that in as a kid you yeah know? no you definitely felt a sense of like when you had a good weekend or a good day and stuff and you felt like everything went off smooth especially if you're doing food or like games that aren't a rip off of rides like you know you, a lot of the ride guys would feel pride in having like a really nice ride with all the lights working and stuff like that making sure every bulb is fixed because then you got some rides where the rides who the ride guys didn't really give a fuck and oh, like yeah. all the lights are busted they got one blinking light going and like yeah that's it and no music and yeah and yeah the ride guys you know like i said he's like one of those guys that just got out of prison and yeah so he's not he doesn't really care about the ride that much but when, but for the families that are out there and like when you have a good weekend or like a really nice fair and you feel good about like, you know, putting on a good show for everybody and like having a good, you know, I had pride in having a really like the cleanest stands and putting out quality food, you know? You mean like a family's running, like a, if a family owned, like we do the games or we do the, like or we do the food and right. we do the rot games. So there would be some organization of that. Yeah. There would be yeah. th multiple families. There would be like, you know, sometimes 10, 12 different families out there. Yeah. All owning. I mean, sometimes you would have one guy that just owned his one game and he would travel everywhere with you, with you just running his one game. And that's oh. what he owned. Was there another world of carning where it was like somebody owned all of it and they would just hire all the people? Yeah, it's becoming that now. Oh, it is. Yeah, it definitely is. What is it like about that? What is it that makes people go to a carnival, you think, or go to a fair? Like, what is it? Fun. They want to go on the rides. Yeah. They want to have some fun. They want to escape. We need more escapism these days. Yeah. It was fun. It I was, definitely remember it was fun. Yeah, and that was the thing. Like, it was crazy and stuff, and we have some crazy stories, but we always wanted to make sure, like, we had we wanted to provide a good time for the people, too. I oh, mean, yeah? granted, the rides definitely, you know, are. A, I mean, the games are a hustle, and some agents did take it too far. Mm -hmm. You know, I agree. Like, those people that were getting robbed of their life savings, like, you're taking it too far. Yeah. But um, for the most part, like, you do want the people to have a good time and come back the next day and bring more people and... Any animals ever get loose out there when you guys... Oh, man. Well, one time we let a chicken go. We we stole a chicken or a rooster and we put it up uh -huh. in the doghouse of the music fest. Mm -hmm. So when the next day they came to work, there was this wild rooster up in the, up in the doghouse. 
and the doghouse is the control room where you run the ride. Oh, nice. And the music fest is the one where like they go around. It's like they're, you're in a car that kind of swings and it goes around like this big, like uh, not a track, but it's kind of because it's on an arm. So they kind of, the cars swing and they swing around and they're playing like crazy music or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I think yeah. I remember that one. And then it's like, are you guys ready to go backwards? Yeah. Let's go backwards this time. There it is. Music fest. Yeah, dude. God, those rides were such a big thing. Or yeah, we put a we put a chicken in the doghouse one time yeah. for the for the ride guy. <laughs> so when they showed up the next day, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I remember one time a lady just brought a box of cats and fucking just dumped that bitch out at the fair. That's a good place to get rid of them. Yeah, I think uh-huh. that was like some of the vibe. It was just like people that had extra animals or whatever, and are like, we're gonna bring them up here because we knew people be up here, and. If they want a cat, they got it or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I, there was always some weird shit like that going on. Any love stories over the years you see where Carnivies met each other? And yeah, I met. I'm. I mean, back in the day, that's the only place I really met. I mean, my friend April, who I was been with, I was with for you know almost ten years or something. We were 16, 17 when we hooked up. And Y'all met at a carnival? Yeah, she worked for somebody, and I was working out there, and she worked for a friend of mine, another family. Let me dart that balloon, huh? Yeah, she, she was actually pregnant when we hooked up already, too. And, uh, really? Yeah. Wow, that seems it was illegal. Crazy. That's yeah, crazy it, it in the eyes I mean, of God, but I don't know. And we're still friends, and I still, I mean, Raekwon, her son, is works for me <laughs> oh, now. Yeah, yeah, really? Wow. Yeah, her son works for me. Like Really? Yeah. So, wow, that's love, man. Yeah, well, that's we're the We're still thing. best friends, you know? Oh, really? Yeah, we're not together, obviously, but yeah, we're best friends still, and... Damn. So, yeah, we've yeah. had some... Love can happen out there, I think huh? my nephew met his wife out there. He's met, He just got married a year or two ago. He met her out there. Yeah. yeah. But she was South African. I think she came from, over from uh, that whole... When they brought all... Because they keep bringing more South Africans over every year. Why? Just for that work and vacation they sell them. People think that they're going to come to America and make a lot of money and travel and see the country. But are they bummed out when they get here or no? They're Most like, oh, of them are. Cool. They yeah. are? Yeah. But they're already here. And they're already here. Some of them pay to go back home. Like, you got to wow. like... But some of them love it. And some of them end up rising up and getting positions of power, too. Yeah. So, it goes both ways. Some of them hated it. Some of them didn't mind it. And some of them loved it. Oh, yeah. The Mexicans, I don't know, because... They all spoke Mexican. I couldn't figure it out if they liked it or not. Yeah, I think Mexican people adjust pretty well. Yeah. They just adjust well to most things, you know? I would like to be Mexican. It'd probably be fun. Oh, yeah. I think I would be, I don't know if I'd be good at it, but I would be, I know I would try my best, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, my girlfriend's half Mexican. Really? Yeah. And yeah. Does she seem, does that part of her seem good? I love it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, I would just, we'll see what happens. But I, anyway, that's like a bigger conversation. But what about like gypsies? Did y'all ever run across those types of folks? Oh, yeah, we had some gypsies. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, man, we had some that like, did like the uh, psychic readings and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's and they mushes, traveled. a lot of mushes out yeah, there. Yeah, we didn't see them much. Really? They were gypsies. So but they, they were yeah, travelers. They were travelers. Like, because normally, like, if you wanted to do the big fairs, you would have to like as a like if you were a gypsy that just wanted to come in and do it, yeah. or like in us family or different families that were out there. They would make you do the spring season with them, and you had to do all the shit spots if you wanted to get the good spots. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's just like comedy. Yeah. So, but I don't know how the gypsies got away with it. Maybe just because, like, what do you mean he got away with it? They would do what? They wouldn't have to do the shit spots. Sometimes you would just see a gypsy, like a psychic reader or somebody that did like the palm reading yeah. or, the, or the cards. And you would only see them at like some of, the, some of the big fairs. And they wouldn't have to do like all the shit spots. Oh, they didn't have to play the smaller ones in this and the, yeah. the ones you didn't love. Yeah. And they were funny, man. And you'd walk by like, because I never went into them, but she would always like, come on in. I don't want. And it, they're, they're so perceptive because they would try to get you to think that they were being psychic or they knew something but they're just watching what's going on out in the carnival and they're like oh there's gonna be a blonde in your life i see it and it's like yeah because you saw me last night hanging out with her right like but they're uh yeah the gypsies are yeah real interesting my brother's friend donnie is a gypsy i think he won't i mean he might not admit it but i think he is but i don't know if he is but he is he is but I wouldn't mind being a gypsy. I don't know much about it. I don't. I just wish I knew more about it. I like kind of simple, you know. I like kind of like jewelry or whatever. And 
sometimes. I don't like a lot. I mean, I, they're yeah. so secretive. They're like, <clears throat> gypsies are unique. They're, they're very, unique. Yeah. yeah. They're like, co yeah, you don't know what's going on. No, you they're never like know. They're like Navy SEALs, but of like complete bullshit. You don't know what they're thinking, what they do, like if they're being, if they're being serious mm. or not, if like yeah, they're telling you honest. Yeah, you don't know. They just say stuff and they have their own language. Yeah, they do. Yeah. It's pretty He's like, he's on Speezy because he leaves it to I can't even speak it right. Really? Is that Pig Latin? Carney. Oh, that's Carney. Yeah, Carney is tough because you, you have to. Oh, there's a Carney language. Yes. Really? Yeah. Like, what do you, what do you, he's tell like, he's in Spizik. Oh, it's like a pig Latin kind yeah, of? Yeah, you put E E Z before every vowel. Oh, my. So it gets tough. E E Z. E E Z. Yeah. Oh, my. G E Z. Gizod. It would be Gizod. Oh, my. Gizod. So, oh, it would be Izo Mizai Gizod. Oh, my God. Izo Mizai Gizod. Wow. Bizod. You put Ezod above? E-E-Z before every vowel. So God would be Gizod. Okay. Bezust. Ezon. <laughs> what was this? What did the lady say? Bezust. <laughs> Eza. Oh, yeah. Nezut. Bezust. Ezon. Mezies. <laughs> Mezies. Busting that on, man. That's a crazy. So how do you shut the carnival down and move it to the next place? What's that like? What's the breakdown like in the so setup? You, when you close at night, you wait for the big gondola wheel to close down. That's how you know you're closed. You what is the big gondola wheel? The big Ferris wheel, the, the giant Ferris, Ferris wheel. wheel. You wait for the lights to go off, and that means you close. That's when you know it's time to close. And you close down, and uh, depending on what you ran, um, games were really easy to tear down. <clears throat> you know, the hardest thing was putting on the hitch after they took your game away because the hitches come off the, that pull the trailer that you pull the trailer by. Mm -hmm. You got to take those off so you can put all the games bottom up to each other make the midway. Wait, hold on. When you say make the midway, what do you mean? And you put them what into the truck? When you put, you know, when you go on to the midway, the midway is like <clears throat> where all the games and the food are. They're all able to butt up against each other flat because you take the hitch off where that, that goes on to the, that you hook the truck up to, you back the truck up to the hitch. Oh yeah. And so that comes off and that's probably the hardest part of like tearing down a game. Okay. It's taking that on and off. And how do y'all travel it all out there? How does it all move out? So it's up to each family. They usually have trucks. That pull, that pull their stuff and somebody that works for them usually will be a driver or two they might have a couple drivers mm -hmm. um or you might hire a trucking company to come in and pull your stuff um the the carnival that like the carnival itself they own big trucks that pull their stuff and they also hire people out too depending on how fast you got to get the stuff over the road how far it is if you can make multiple trips or not because sometimes if you're only going you know 50 60 miles you can make multiple trips but if you're going a couple hundred miles you might not want to make as many trips you know yeah you don't have the time yeah so you'll hire a trucking company to come in and take it and i used to tear down rides and stuff too for extra money so i would do like sometimes up to five rides a, a night i tear down and set up. I would tear down five rides, go set up five rides. And, you know, I'd make good extra money doing that. Yeah. And that was cash. Yeah, so what do they pay an extra 50 bucks to help tear yeah. down a ride or something? Yeah. Wow. So you do four or five a night, make yeah, an extra make couple, a couple hundred, hundred bucks. bucks. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, the stand I have now, like, some of the, even back then at the carnival, we had a wooden frame. Like, I ran, towards the end, I ran the, all, I was in charge of the food stands for my brother and my father. Mm -hmm. And, um, we had the wood frame sausage stands that had the counters that came along the side that you could sit at and sit at the counters and like watch them cook and stuff like that. I don't know if you had them down here or not, mm -hmm. but that, so that's what I have now. That's what I use out at the festivals too. Okay. And that's a lot of work because everything has to come out of the truck. You know, the grills, the fry laters, the fridges, like everything comes out. You How would they move the big rides? How do they get those to the next town or whatever? Yeah. Big, big truck. You tear it down and, most of them, they fold down pretty small. Like a lot of them, you uh, fold do they down. fold onto a semi or just onto a trailer? Onto a semi trailer. On a onto semi trailer. It's a trailer. Yeah, it's got right. wheels under it. Right, right. Some of them are ground. We call the other ones that aren't on a trailer ground mounts. Okay. So they'll have a trailer for it, and but everything has to come off the trailer and set up on the ground. Okay. But then some are on the trailer itself, and the trailer just unfolds like a, you know, like a transformer. How hard is it to break down a whole carnival? Does it take a whole day, or they get it done in a matter of? It depends. I mean, you could move, you could get it done fairly fast. You know, sometimes you can be, have everything done in like a good six hours or so. Wow. Really? Mm -hmm. And I'd do they travel at night usually or what yep. does it happen? Yeah. Yeah. Cause usually close Sunday nights 
And so you're done, depending on how late you close. Sometimes you'll close early. Um, some Sundays, though, they do the uh, the bracelets where you buy a bracelet and you could ride all the rides all day and night. Yeah. And so when they do that, and if you're making money, you stay open later because you don't want to you don't want to close on people is what we call it. Oh yeah, if there's people still there, huh? yeah. It was one other game we used to play where you would like put the slide the money and it would the, oh you pay and get these thing of coins and you put oh, the coins yeah. in and it would push called the splash down is one of the ones we called it yeah it would move the coins forward yep. and sometimes it would push a little like a th an actual quarter would be on top of them it would push a quarter off or a dollar we use quarters in ours oh you do yeah there was sometimes depending on the state sometimes you had to use coins sometimes you can use uh, quarters in Maine you can use quarters yeah. And so, but those are a hustle too. Are they? Yeah, because there's a couple different ways they hustled it. Sometimes there would be uh, something under the quarters of the coins. There's like this triangle right at the front of the lip. Mm -hmm. So when they're pushing, they push sideways. And if you want to see on the sides, there's the splashdowns. On the sides, did you notice before that there's an out of bounds? So the coins can push yes. into the out of bounds. So you would put a lot of weight in the middle so that, Instead of pushing forward, it would push mm -hmm. to the side. Yeah, because they could fall off to the side. Yeah. And if they fell off in the middle, you got it. You got it. Right. But if they fall to the sides, the house gets it. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was it, it right there. And so the more weight you put in the front, the more it's going to push to the sides. Damn. Sometimes people would glue that shit down. Nuh-uh. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> you know what it taught you, though? It taught you about loss, man. It taught you that life is going to fucking, you're probably going to lose. <laughs> yeah. You know? And you're probably going to knock somebody up. Yeah. It just taught me that everything is a fucking hustle, man. Yeah. Everything in life, whether it's your HVAC guy, whether it's your teacher at high school. Yeah. Whether it's your second fucking wiener. Yeah. It's a fucking hustle. Life's a hustle, dude. Because, yeah, life's a hustle, man. Um so that was another thing. Speaking of his wiener, that was the way he made money. You were asking how like I knew he used it. He used to make these pamphlets and he'd sell those things to everybody because he was tired of answering all those questions if his penis oh, worked or not. How really? he like like his like uh, hygiene and stuff like that. The great Lentini, you mean? Yeah, the great Lentini. So he, I'd love to get a hold of one of those. Wow, that'd be fascinating if you had that pamphlet. Bring up that. Bring that up one more time. I want to look at him as we close out here. My dad had three nipples. Did he really? Yeah. Wow. That next nipple right down here. Hmm. That's almost, that's like a third leg. It's kind of like a third. It's like, it seems like it's the same genetics, you know? Yeah. I was, I was kind of wondering that if it was because of the gene type thing. Franklin Tini, for as long as I can remember, uh, sideshow attractions. Let's look at two more before we go. Mirin Dajo, the invulnerable man. Mirin Dajo was born in Rotterdam in the Netherlands in 1912. Mirin was famous for piercing his body with sharp objects and suffering no pain or even bleeding as a result. He also had boiling water hurled at him and survived being shot in the head multiple times. Jesus. Miriam was not affiliated with any one sideshow act or circus, but the idea of being a human pincushion was one that was popular in that industry. Wow, so he would put pins right through himself. He was the real article. Wow, that's pretty crazy. I think I remember hearing about him. Really? Like when, I was, when I was researching my uncle, the, I remember seeing, and the Elastic Man too, there was a guy that, I, maybe that was him, that could like stretch his skin really crazy. Mirin Dajo. Maybe it was him. While he would perform, he would also preach and say that his abilities were the result of God showing those he performed for that there was something better out there. While he preached, he would also condemn the idea of materialism. Huh. So he kind of had a message with what he was doing. Interesting. Interesting, man. Um... Mitch, man, nice yeah. to meet a Carney, bro. Nice Dude. to meet a guy that's uh, that's been through it and able to come here and share a little bit of what the world and universe is like. Yeah, it's it's been quite a ride, man. It's definitely been interesting, and I wouldn't change it for the world. It's taught me a lot, and uh, it got me. Yeah, it got me. It, it, I mean, it's where it's where I am today. It got me here to meet you. Yeah, it got man, me, it got like, me here to meet you. And I'm I'm. The job I have now, like selling food out there is, uh, they treat me like a rock star out there. And I'm not going to lie. Like they, they really do. And I have to give a shout out to all those, all those, all my nieces and nephews out there in the world that really like support me and take care of me and out there. Like they really love Uncle Mitch's Munchies, home of the turtle dick sandwich. Really? And, yep. And it's real meat? Yeah. Turtle dick sandwich. There's only two places in the country that could sell it. Oh, wow. Yep. It's in danger. It's got to be endangered or whatever. Yeah, so we do it. We do it. You know, now we go get we get the turtle, we snip it, and oh. send it back off in the wild. You serious? No, 
Oh. But we do sell a turtle dick sandwich. But it's not real. But it's not turtle dick. Okay. <laughs> But yeah. that's what it says on the menu. It says turtle dick sandwich, and then it says, if you have to ask, it's not for you. Oh, I see. So we fuck with Well, everybody. that's just one of the things. It's like, you just can't even get real turtle dick anymore. No, but you should see all the turtle dicks we have now. People make turtle dick. Like, we have all these turtle dicks, a dancing turtle dick, and just <laughs> all this crazy shit out there. The games continue, man. Oh, man. They don't uh, stop. I love it. Thanks so much for your time, man. Um, yeah, I appreciate you coming, dude, and Thank spending you. some time with us. And uh, I'm going to see you on the ninth. Yeah? Yeah, it's actually what I do in the winter. I work for my buddy's company, North Beast, up there with Ashley and Frankly at UMass Amherst. Oh, yes, yeah. Saturday night or something? Saturday night, yeah, I think a Friday night, Saturday night. It's Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be working it. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you soon then. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Mitch, thank you so much, man. Nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry for the sweat. Oh, good. I'm nervous still. Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take